Right, I believe, I believe I have, um, not necessarily fixed, but made my, uh, what is it, streaming point of view a bit better. I believe that I have, previously it's been super stuttery. The biggest con of that was using display capture on Age of Empires 3 instead of game capture or window capture. So I've got a game capture's preference, window capture's reserve underneath. So I hope I should be able to capture the game, but not using display capture. I've changed a few advanced video settings up the bitrate just a tiny bit streaming at 50 fps instead of 30 now hopefully we're better let me know if it's not uh if it's not well i don't know the first thing i'll be doing if it's not great will be uh unfortunately saying goodbye to the overlay program because i potentially it's quite expensive I, I don't know i'm just using an excuse at this moment in time because i want to make the actual in-game casting as best as possible for example if it makes to youtube you know, you're not going to see the overlay, you're going to see the in-game stuff, so hopefully that works. Right, I'm going to uh, pretty much switch over to the uh, in-game scene straight away. I do not want to risk anything. General Warwick, Pierre Beaumont, number one, ready to go. Right, hope you guys are looking forward to this and saying I will hop into this game and I'll have a quick swig first. Where's my drink? Ah, oh, there it is. Uh, Ajiv. How do you pronounce as good as this? Well, it's practice and also... <laughs> it's practice and also not being good at the game. That helps more things, less things to focus on. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for another cast of series on ESOC TV. My name is Harrison. We are here in the Hidden Cup number two, semi-final number one between General Warwick and Pierre Beaumont. The General here spawned to the left of the map Saguenay in the colour blue, playing as the Spanish. Pierre Beaumont we play as the Chinese, spawned to the eastern map in the colour red. Nice double gold start in base for him. Don't think that will matter too much in age one. And uh, starting treasures here for the General. Just a gold treasure, might have picked up a crack shot at the wood treasure first, but he's gone down for the trading post. This is the first time the general has been seen in the semi-finals. His first round game in the quarterfinals was a bye. Unfortunately, his opponent had to DQ due to admin decisions. So nobody really knows what, who the general is, how the general will play. I'll be interested to see this as well. Pierre Beaumont defeated uh, his opponent or her opponent. So you, ne you never know, never know. 3-1 uh, and looking beyond fine form. So this could be a really, really hotly anticipated series. The general here playing Spain, a very strong sieve at the moment. 90 food to kick us off. Absolutely glorious. I have noticed here 12 10 potential. No, nope, the house does come down. He was chopping wood, but I have had a quick look at his deck. Oh, look at that. Water hybrid. Decent land cards, decent water cards. We even see the pistoliers in age 3 as well. No wood or gold in the third age, as in wood or Spanish gold. But potential for a lot of decision water play. We'll check in on the general to see if he goes for that play afterwards. Pierre yeah, Beaumont. Single village, single trading post opening. Looking at his deck. Does have two cards age one. Vils and Tides. Might see both of them being sent behind this. Anti-water card does have the... Uh, offshore support, was it? Or European cannons does have the full Khan. There is a potential here for two war junks, but I don't think that will ever really be sent. No Chukanus here versus Spain. That's interesting. Bit risky, that decision. I'd certainly have the Chukanus here instead of the Mongolian Scourge. I, I don't think it's a good card. And not having Chukanus in your deck just doesn't give you the flexibility you need to play Age 2 China if you're going that route. More treasures down here. 90 food, three wolves. Pierre Beaumont's taken on. He has scouted a 75 wood treasure nearby. Gone line of sight. Yes, he has confirmed that site. He's kind of seen that the the generals to the north of the map looking on the wood on a wolf treasure. I can't recall what that treasure would have been, but to Pierre's advantage, he he knows where his explorer is, and that's kind of the most important part with treasure gathering is get a good lay of the land, know where your opponent explorer is, so you can know what treasures you can take yourself. And avoid them being stolen. Paul Kong here, just waiting around, getting a bit of HP regeneration. Not wanting to dive in. He does have the stun ability ready to go. Yep, has been called. He's going to take on the wolves. Meanwhile, the general. 
It's marching to the north of the map. There's actually no treasure here. I think that might have despawned, unless it spawns around um, this location where I'm dragging my box, or maybe slightly to the north of the trees. On the other side, we do see a massive 120 food treasure by two polar bears uh, at the back of Pierre's base. Good afternoon, Simlo. Welcome to the stream, currently in game number one in this semi-final. So best of seven, by the way. Best of seven, boys. So we'll be in for a nice long one. Chuck in. Make yourself comfortable. Pour yourself a cup of tea. Pour yourself a cup, second's cup of tea. And enjoy the ride. Who's playing here? Oh, good question. We have the General versus Pierre. So uh, we'll have to find out how this goes. TD is coming in second card here for Pierre of Bone One Agent Up with Summer Palace. Four Vills on it being built. Uh, the Agent time here should be pretty decent, pretty competitive. Currently looking to get for a 4.30. Yeah, 4.30 flat. Looking to be very strong. Maybe a couple um, goats were eaten. He does have lots of sheep on his um, village. I think the goat has already been eaten. Decent treasures. Did see the 90 food. Bit of wood in transition as well. The wood is still there, just chilling. There's no reason just yet to chop any more wood. Going up with the Russian consulate, looking for the early blockhouse. Likely wanting to put the blockhouse on the coast to put some pressure on the water play. I'm sure his, I'm sure Pierre Beaumont has checked on General's deck and seen that he has aged up. Well, he's seen the deck, seen the water play, but he's actually seen that he's aged up here with the governor support. In-base outpost, 200 gold, but uh, more importantly, not logistician water play, so... Nice bit of scouting there from Pierre. Knows what he's working with. He knows that the general isn't looking to be sending stuff like fish markets, schooners, um, maybe team coastal defense here, uh, furrier, eco theory, 300 woods. There's loads of cards which he, the general could have sent on the lot of play, but knows he's gone for standard H2. Defensive governor age up here and using the water as a kind of semi economic option. <laughs> Kaiser already in with the Uncas versus A's. Well, we don't really know that. You could say that the Spanish play is on standard, but uh, with a bit of preparation, somebody can quite un uh, quite handily know how to play uh, at water semi here. A lot of people do say that this matchup favours Chinese. China do do well at the moment. They, they are a very strong sieve. I'm kind of unsure whether they are that le high of level as everyone says they are, but I will bow down to superior people's knowledge. I think this matchup in particular is relatively even. I think Spain do very well going very aggressive. Still H3, but aging up maybe a bit of cab, sending rods as pivot, training dogs, getting under the opponent's base really quickly with tempo, and trying to force out maybe the hand water shipment. Lance is doing incredible. There's a lot of potential that Spain has to win early just to win the early age three against China quite hard, and then can kind of play from there. As the game goes on and on and on, China will grow into the game, which is kind of why we see a defensive porcelain tower being thrown up by Pierre here. Looking to be actually a really decent age up as well. I I'm just looking at this. 45 seconds remaining. He's aging up with eight vills. That's going to be about a 7 15, 7 10. And so far, this actual, the actual game itself is a little bit flaggy. Oh, interesting. I don't think it's necessarily the recording side, but actually the playback is a little bit here and there, but should be pretty good with the rest of it. Pierre here, aging up with Borson Tower. Has a shipment ready to, ready to go, but not opting to send 700 wooden pivot. Needing to keep that shipment for units, I believe. I'm also try and hold on to this train post as long as possible. The monk is nearby. We do see a batch of sun palace units out. The two canoe and the step rise. They can definitely be used to defend the train post. And a couple of disciples looking good. Yes, the monk's coming in. Maybe you see some disciples. Early arquebusier has been shipped. Just, 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 just waiting up, waiting to get behind, waiting to get the snare and actually queuing up disciples. Wants this to be as safe as a hold. And it doesn't matter if the train post lives with. 1000 HP, 100 HP, or just 10 HP. As long as it stays alive, it stays alive. Okay, here come the steps to get the snare in to prevent the retreat. Chukanu working in. Disciples punching down, but there are dogs here fighting back. 18 hand attack. Disciples here, not even close to 18 hand attack. Just a 15. A little bit. Same HP, so it's basically dog and dog, but the dogs, backed by the musketeers, are dominating this fight. 
I'm going to push Pierre back and probably take down the train post as a result. So yes, the H2 Dogs versus H3 Disciples. Yeah, Dogs winning that one. We do see a rather late decision to switch from the Russian Consulate into Brit Consulate. I feel that if you want to go Brit Consulate, get that changed as soon as that blockhouse comes down so that you can call intervention as soon as you age up. But I also feel that this uh, maybe Porcelain Tower, although it's really nice, he's forced essentially card one here as the Archibald Sierras instead of tr like timing the Confucian Academy Skirmisher and the Redcoats age up at the same time for a decent mass and being able to push straight away. The General's still in the second age and an early batch of Intervention Musketeers and Skirms would put so much pressure under General Warwick already but can't go for the economy play is just giving the General time for more of a water presence and um, yeah, Pierre Belmont still needs to throw down a dock to try and contest the water. Now gets into the point where there's quite a lot of fishing boats and they are upgraded decently. 0.87 foods, 0.63 gold per second. These are essentially regular villagers, unupgraded regular villagers, on the water, but at the moment, no real way to out of them. Oh, I do see that the Chinese flag has been moved to near that vicinity. May see a full car and shipment coming from behind. And it's very important that trading post stands or stays standing for the XP income. General Warwick nearly up. We do see Gilnets being researched behind. It's interesting, rendering plant was sent before Gilnet's research. There's so many fishing boats here, 20 fishing boats, but realistically, no more fishing boats should be trained. Just go straight into long lines now, and your fishing boats will be incredible. But probably the better play would be to get an early frigate going and anticipate the arrival of the full Khan. Infantry sieging down one dot. Maybe the caravel can come in to get pulled. We do see Meacher Hammers going for a little raid. Dogs and Musks in defensive play behind. Veteran Musketeers now being researched here from the barracks. We we'll push the cavalry away. One dock's coming down, but there's still one standing quite nicely. Maybe they just want to drop down a very defensive dock to ensure that uh, you'll never lose that full on position on the water. Pierre Beaumont still going into. Skirm sword armies on the summer palace and being trained at the blockhouse. Civil servants being researched. Uh, Vil currently in queue. Not really indicating the want to go for full, full Khans just yet. Actually wanting to make a good impression on the land push so far. He does have a brick consulate down, but not, no intervention, no muskets in the field. This push is not super scary. Has been forced back by the town centre outpost. A couple lances here. Really good from Spain just to ensure but the Chinese player isn't having enough momentum. Well, oh, this is very interesting. Mortars are being sent from China. That's going to be very strong in terms of anti-fishing boats. And if those mortars can get onto a central island here, it can cause absolute havoc. But apart from that, though, I'm kind of, I'm kind of fearing the shipment. It's not, it's not the level of momentum that Pierre wants. He, I think, the full Khan would be better. But he hasn't got any docks. He hasn't got any real presence to take on the water play himself he's kind of having to get uh, more population space it's just a lot of things back in base is slowing down oh masses surround here Lance is charging in on, on essentially purely skirm a couple chained downs here but enough muskets to fight this back mortars coming out but they're countering no fishing boats they're countering no musketeers this is a cleanup this is essentially going to be a cleanup here explorer is unfortunately the explorer is down for um both players, General Warwick's on the north, but so no dogs here, but uh, enough lances to rip through the Chang Daos, and as soon as the skirms and Shukanoods have got no anti cavalry cover, I think we'll be looking at <laughs> looking at the GG market because China has lost all momentum and Spain is still on the water. Spain still has an incredible economy. And just the power of the Vet Lancer has been an incredible unit behind. Look at this. Cav Combat being sent instead of units. The long line's been researched on top of um, Gilnet's and Rendering Plant behind this. 57 Villa Economy. And the Hand Mortars, are, well, they're, they're, now, they're now naked. They've got no protection. They're not really working on any fishing boats. And the General has shown us... An absolute masterclass here in Spanish water eco ballet behind this. Lance is charging it as you know, if he sees the hand mortars, he's just diving in even further. But I think he wants to take down the, the barracks, the blockhouse first, and ensure pr protection. Even going for the Cree 
Train post getting Cree HP first. Incredible. 10% HP. Lance is at 420 now on top of the cavalry combat card. Lance is looking very, very strong. And then all this is just all this behind us is just cavalry. The uh, infantry. All these units have got about to take 69 attack from the Lancers and musketeers behind as well for decent siege. Uh, looking good. Looking good. Yeah, Mito got knocked out rather early, I think, in one of the qualifiers. Uh, very strong, but not currently in the current meta. Redcoats have to push forward into melee, but when you've got this many upgraded Lancers, there's no way China can deal with this. Absolutely no way. And I think Spain is romping home to victory here in game number one. Redcoats do pop out, but there's so many Vet Musketeers to deal with this. That power spike versus Pierre Beaumont was hoping for it hasn't quite worked out. A couple of scums behind. The hand is just doing minimal minimal damage to anything at the moment. They are essentially a very wasted shipment in terms of tempo and production. Falks will come, but uh, not in time to impact the game. And the first game being called GG the General, leading Pierre Bowman 1-0. Yeah, looking pretty good there. Nice, nice little play. Essentially, the Porcelain Tower behind. Oh, it sets, it sets a rainbow mode at the end of that game. Um, the Porcelain Tower, although a decent play in terms of getting getting your comedy going, the market down, population, there was never enough tempo or momentum to try and push and break Spain before the water play paid off. Um, I always feel that going Confucian Academy is how you want to. Uh, tackle a Spain play. Uh, the Brit concert came in possibly late, but no real inter musk units came out until the, the dying end. That push is hoping for more to get done, but it's a def um, very nice defense there with the town center outpost and Lancer play there from, from the general. Opting to go for musketeers instead of rodilleras or skirmishers. And imagine you even protect both the docks, not allowing even a single dock going down. The caravel age up very nicely, pushing back those infantry. And uh, securing a very well-controlled, managed game, I think, is how I want to describe that. Plenty of uh, coin being gathered from the whales. Plenty of fish still in the pond as well. So, well played. Well played, well played. Let's look at the post-game. Oh, just being caught out by the Lancers there, unfortunately. Once the chain does go down, the anti-infantry cavalry go to town and take... The take everybody out in one fell swoop very very nice villager populations will look very disgusting here the fishing boot boat boom the porcelain tower does add about eight vills the summer palace maybe add four vills so it's still down but it's not just in the number these are very upgraded villagers two fishing techs and rendering plants the economy looking fantastic here for spain you'll see that as well diverging away from spain no from china and china just can't really catch up they can't compete militarily, and they can't compete economically this game. Right. That is going to be 1-0 to the general. Let's have a little tinker and see what our game number two is going to be. Ooh, here we go, here we go. We have a Russia versus French game. How's everyone doing today? Been playing some nice fun multi games on stream. Yeah, I'm struggling to make too much of a of a push through with that sieve. It's a real tough sieve to play at the moment, but I have been enjoying Mage Empires recently. How was the... Uh, how was the visual on that game compared to um, previous games? Was that alright? I have a very quick sneak peek before I hop into the next game. Cavalry cover. Oh, don't listen to me again. Ah, it's just... Oh, that's... I'm going to turn off the um, stream overlay, unfortunately, I think. Although beautiful, not the level we need for the time being. I 
yeah, everything else should be fine. We'll just turn off a couple of these other things. Okay, that's all good. Right. Next game's on Cascade Rage. They've started. Let's catch them up and let's have a good one. See you in there. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to our second game in this S S Hidden Cup semi-final number one. Best of seven between General Warwick and Pierre Beaumont. The General currently leading 1-0 after a great game on Saguenay, playing as the Spanish. But for game two, on Cascade Range, we're going to see the General here playing Russia, spawning to the southeast of the map in the colour blue. Pierre playing as the French, spawning to the northwest in the colour yellow. Playing French on no TP map is pretty ballsy, but I have a feeling I know what Pierre Beaumont is wanting to do. And conversely, General Warwick here. I think I've got ideas as well what may may happen. So let me elaborate. French player. Recently, natives have been uh, shown to be pretty strong with the French, especially with other cards being added as well, like the Royal Musketeers. So the potential here for Pierre Beaumont to go. Go with the Klamath, go with the Nuka, go infantry, natives, go mid-map, bit of aggression, look to stay as an age 2. General Warwick here, playing with Russia. I'd be tempted to age up with the 900 food logistician age up here. That means you do get a blockhouse wagon and every blockhouse provides extra 10 population, I think. So potential strong defensive play here that General Warwick can have access to, maybe triple blockhouse. Just take control of the middle and just keep spamming those buildings. Also, wood. Uh, pretty easy to come by here from Russia with the forger wood age up if you're going that way. Um, distributism, 700 wood, and you're always chopping for stradlets and housing. May see a side dock here from Russia's point of view. That's what I'm thinking. I'm expecting to see in this game, so we'll see if that's a comeback. I've uh, looked back at... I'm looking back at the preview. You know what? It looks pretty decent. So, uh, unfortunately, although this, the stream overlay program is beautiful in how it functions and works, I, I can't quite get it to work on my system to the, um, the best. And so, if somebody can, can confirm in the chat that the actual in game content is actually looking really crisp and clear, that would be very appreciated. Otherwise, I've just turned off a program. It's going to take me ages to set it back up again, and I've just shot myself in the knee. Let's have a look at the General's deck first. We do see standard Russian land, five Cossack, four Cossack presents. We do see double gold here instead of double wood. 700 wood present, no food. Spice trade makes an appearance, but there's potential here for double stable Cossack spam continuously, which I think is a very smart play versus what we're about to see because Nuka Klopman, they're not good in terms of... Anti-Cav, the Klamaths, obviously skirmishers. Well, we do see this scout. He wants this Nuka settlement. And, oh, Pierre, Pierre Beaumont's getting one straight away in age one. I'm sure he's age of a transition. And I'm sure he's remote built that first and then built of Explorer. So instead of paying 200 wood for this, he spent, he's paying 100 wood and 100 food just getting a half price built trading post essentially and the second train post has been remotely constructed we'll take a minute to build but i'm sure the explorer will move over to try and speed that process up so yes we're going to be seeing natives coming here from pierre beaumont look at his deck he does have native combat h2 native unit hp in h2 native treaties as well no team native unit in h in h1 but i don't think it's that impactful of a card so i wouldn't worry about it we don't see any um, Royal Bourbons in Age 2 as well, so we're kind of forced in just the natives on the map. But it does have Cav Combat, the two Cav cards in the third age, so there is potential to pivot into more standard play as the game goes on. Similar, other deck names defined in their rules? Yes, and the only reason that is, is just to say, is just to prevent um, foreign languages revealing who's who. Let's say we've got. I don't know, somebody from China, and they turn up and their decks are in Chinese. It, you might be thinking, hmm, is that going to be Ungers? Or is that going to be that Chinese player? And you're thinking, okay, well, I know who I'm playing against. So it's just trying to uh, 
take any uh, personalization out of this to make it as hidden as possible as we can see. French player here, kind of not going for villagers, just going straight into full Kamaf, full Nuka, and native treaties for a push. We see two CPA Beaumont going for uh, the general defensive blockhouse. He sees the natives, and I think he's already clocked how he wants to play this. He wants to be as defensive as possible. One outpost is up, one town center is ready to go. I don't imagine we see a CM in deck, no, but 13 straight, straight away. There's no point going there's no point going Cossacks because you know the nuke goes around, but uh, Stradlets are going to have some good fun taking on the Klamaths. And I think the Stradlets en masse should win quite handily here. So far, <laughs> look at the score difference. That is just Russia being Russia, but I actually find that Russia's position, Russia's position here is probably quite tolerable. He might get a batch of 10 strikes now, but I ideally what I really want to see him do is get a second blockhouse ASAP. Get that in base, get that going. And um, yeah, actually, well, I mean, there's, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff here from France, and I don't think the general can really afford to get that blockhouse going. He does have quite a bit of gold left over, but I'd love to see him invest that into uh, more wood. He's going steel traps. It's, uh, it's, that's a risky investment at this time of the game. Like you'd really want to be pushing on your defensive play. Another batch of strikes being trained. He's actually cancelled the strikes just to get the steel traps in earlier. So there's only 13 strikes. We're really relying on the outposts and the town center fire. Obviously, the town center is getting some decent damage down, but the strikes are not trading yet. He, that's what he really wants to be in is trading, and he needs to defend his blockhouse urgently. 10 strikes will train from the, the blockhouse. That will push back. Pierre Beaumont for quite a bit, and um, the scaling of Russia is starting to uh, work, but uh, the momentum for France is so high at the moment, and that's looking to be continuing. Ooh, you ballsy play here, going spice trade, second card here for Pierre Beaumont. I think he's seen the amount of nuke there is, and he's not feeling too scared with the straight up mass. Another Kamath has been taken behind this, and he's just happy just to not send wood. Just go for spice trade. I think I would prefer to see wood come in for the housing. Second blockhouse here. Blockhouse over here protecting this hunt. And straight production. You can easily eat your way through 700 wood so quickly as Russia in this situation. Oh, some good kills there. I think, you, I think we're seeing some good building micro. I, I want to say for the general is actually purposely trying to target down low HP units and yes another Klamaf rifleman has gone down and the, the although there's been decent aggression here from Pierre nothing's really breaking through nothing's really targeting only now sending four CDBs he sent 700 wood before because all his units cost uh, food and wood quite low on the wood department actually this is why it's been a very strong native map because both his units are high food low wood cost so it's quite easy to kind of maintain but uh just look at the walking time that the Pierre has to go for his hunts. He's pretty much gone through another hunt as well. I bet you he's got steel traps on. Yeah, look at that. Look at the food income. Steel traps confirmed. Just eating through everything. And soon, Fr France is going to run out of momentum hard. And I'm worried about that. But uh, Russia still being quite fine. Blockhouse defensive town centre playing. Pushing back with Strelitz. Spice trade working in very nice at the moment in terms of... Now it's boosting all the resources... 126. Five Cossacks do come out. I kind of wanted that one to be 700 with 700 with though for affor uh, aforementioned reasons. Cossacks not interested in taking the fight. They're just going to go for a little walk around, try and find some villagers. But General Warwick is keeping this game relatively controlled and for the person who's relatively been under pressure being rushed, now actually pushing forward and breaking out of his base quite comfortably. Star Slime saying, can we use some Hussar? That's quite true. And I think Stable may be in the idea at some point. Um, the problem is Stable is obviously required gold income. It also requires housing and requires switching your entire economy over to kind of deal with that. So you can only really go Hussars under 700 gold. You might just send three Huss as the cavalry component there. And you know, three Huss earlier on could have caught the Strelets and taken at least half them out. So that was the opportunity. Look at this play. General Warwick take... Uh, okay, that's a, that's a lot of HP. I thought the, um, the training bar was HP then. I was like, oh, he's going to take down the training post and try and deny natives that way. Okay, there's a lot of stuff here from um, 
up here, but I'm, I'm hoping for some more Strelets. We've seen quite a lot of masks, actually, but we need to keep the Strelet mask going. The Cav haven't really done anything. They haven't really connected and taken any kills. And uh, Gangsaw now coming in behind for an early Boyars. Skipping again. Resource crates. Yes, Tempting combat on Cossack and Strelets is very nice, but uh, we haven't really got stable down. Okay, we do have a C second blockhouse, but... Uh, oh, I, I don't like this. We can't want that... 700 wood first, just to get a Cossack production going on the stables. Yeah, please cancel, Boyars. We need more stuff. Uh, I guess it could work. These musks are nice for sieging, but they're really un really awkward to try and get into the fight. I guess they can pull back now. Unless they do have a 2 multiplier versus Musketeers and low HP Russian Musketeers. These fall over pretty quickly, so we just need to keep that Strelet production continues to go strong, but 31 builds with Spice Trade. Pierre Beaumont, want 30 CDB behind us, and Nuka, and was it not, not Nuka? Negative HP coming behind. He did say send native combat, so now these units are very, very strong behind, and the muskets feel super outclassed. The tempers relatively, the 10% combat on the Strelets are just outmassed by the. 15% combat on the natives plus 20% HP. Yeah, 15 combat, 20 HP. So we're just going to need lots of this stuff. And the general's trying his best to keep trading. Nice cavalry top side. This is what we need him to have is to try and push our French player off natural resources. The hunts on the top side nearly out as well. So he's going to be on berries very soon. Nuka's charging in. Uh, they only have melee resist, so we're going to get, get some good exchange. But uh, there's so many high up. Up to units here. There's going to be a good exchange here from Pierre Bowman's point of view. Away from building fire. But the Cossacks going back in for another raid. Might get two Vils there. Unless if the Vils don't fight back. Over to General Warwick. Now sending gold. I, I hope he's not thinking of trying to age here. He needs to invest that into Cossacks. Definitely Cossacks. He needs a lot of Cossacks. The, Cos the Strelet production is looking pretty decent behind it. But he's now down to well. Just the 10 Strelets trained. He's lost mid and has to try and regain again. Oof. They're just punching down the thing and... Spice trade now kind of works. We've got the berries. We've got a lot of berries actually to gather on this map. So we're not short on food here from Russia's point of view. Especially defensive berries over here. But um... Yeah, we see we're now back down to tap defensive building fire, getting some more strelets, but the strat mass is so low. And there's no blockhouse over here. These villagers are at risk going down, and they've been scouted. This is really awkward here for Pierre Bowen very quickly. Minutemen being called. Explorer, I don't know where he's got off to. Cover mode, uh, nuke club, and just to close the distance under cover. But once the nukes go down, Cossacks may come up to play, get some decent exchanges. Ah, oh, more Hussey come. Here's the three Hussey's card. Cossacks will move to move into block. Strats will focus down. Minimum doing good again, but again, we're just low on units. The early musketeer play from here from the general hasn't really worked. I, if those early batches of musks were more strats, I don't think we'd be in this position. Still need more buildings to defend. And the berries are relatively saturated in terms of gathering angle. But it's a, a trade is a trade nevertheless, and the game continues. Scores are you know, relatively close considering what's been happening in the last couple of minutes. More Cossacks being trained, more Cossacks being sent. Musketeer batch instead of Strelitz have been called. This is awkward. If this, if this was a 10 Strel batch, I wouldn't be too bad at the moment. Musk will come out. So with the Cossacks. There's only a couple of clubmans nearby, so it's not the end of the world. Like I said, these guys are only having a pretty weak attack versus Cavalry 26. So, uh, yeah, the Cossacks overwhelming the Nuka clubman. And getting on top of the Kamaths, the Kamaths have been forced back behind this. Checking on Pierre, he's not thinking of Asian, is he? No, he's not thinking of Asian. He's just full on new, um, native production and sending in crossbows now to help out behind. The general really needs to get back onto the Strelet production ASAP, a as fast as reasonably possible. And Cossacks doing very, very well with the Boyars. And um, just naturally count soft countering this competition here from Pierre Beaumont with uh, Nuka's relative weakness to cavalry. General Warwick, one batch of strats in cube cutting villager production for the time being. Do you see uh, securing berry, securing hunt. He's, he's looking to improve his food income, which is very nice. Ah, uh, there's vills on berries here, not taking the hunt. Maybe want to maybe want to protect that they're down there, but the Nuka's. I've chased them down. A couple of Kamas will get picked off for reinforcements. So um, 
every cloud it's a silver lining as they say but uh, those uh, villagers are looking to be under massive threats Woods has now been sent here for general work. He's got so much gold. He just needs everybody on food. He needs us to get the food to come in, to get the Cossacks going, the Struts going. He's just nearly quite there with the um, numbers he needs. Unfortunately. Oh, the Vil the Vils have survived. My goodness. They're, so they're alive. We'll get them back. Let's regroup. Let's remass. And let's think about our position. Not 0.8 food per second on berries is actually pretty decent. Should be respected. Those vills of oh, the vills are going back for hunt, but just move them. Why are we still down in the sense of the map? You know you've got no control down here. Just get these vills out of the way and bring them home. Hashtag it's coming. Oh, caravels! Caravels in the pond, putting pressure on the villagers. That's a nice little play actually. That is actually a really smart play in terms of denying one branch. He knows he's got the military on one side, denying this side. Caravels over here denying. Uh, that blockhouse is never going up, so uh, that's... Oh, maybe it doesn't actually reach. But uh, villagers run into the caravels because the Cossacks incoming. And yeah, now that we've actually broken away from the fighting, Russia has the ability to get some units out, is what we're try or basically trying to hope for, from his point of view. Blockhouse being defended on the berries. There's so many berries over here needs to start working on. The Cossacks going for raiding. Um... We'll meet Clubman, actually. We'll see a couple of Vils. Cossacks are back of French base, doing pretty decent. Nuka's being picked up here by Stradets. And uh, Pierre Beaumont doesn't know where to push in, push out, move in, move out. Don't know what's going on. Uh, there's a lot of action all over the place, but there's now a lot. There's just probably too many Clubmen here for these Cossacks to be super effective. Building fire again going to be super critical. Needs in the strelets, needs in the food that it provides. And yeah, Cossacks are oh, nice. Berry raid here. That's going to be a very good raid. Top left, running away from Cossacks. Vils down there. Resi protected. We've got Town Center fire. We've got one blockhouse, two, three firing. Nice cover fire behind. 600 gold now being called in from Pierre Beaumont. No, from the general. Villagers having to fight down the Cossacks. The uh, Nukas have kept into these Cossacks behind, so that Cossack hasn't really done too much, unfortunately. Uh, more Cossacks onto these uh, Vils. This will be crucial, because he knows that there's no infantry nearby. The Struts are pushing back and forcing these Vils into the Caravels. That's a nice little play there to put them back. Score's looking good here for France. I believe in the Russian comeback. I believe in the Russia's position here as a, you know, as Strelitz pretty good versus the NATO com uh, combination, but... Uh, Pierre Beaumont sending gold, training a Huss. Might be tempted to look in for an age up here. It does have potential for elite units. Maybe native warriors for just cheaper spamming. That's a huge economy card in the third age, relatively speaking. Oh, massive raid again. They're back on, not letting those villagers hunt. Now we're underneath the outpost, town center fire. Struts do some good, decent damage. More Cossacks being trained, so they're going to put on pressure onto the clubmen. The Struts are going to put pressure onto, onto the units. Oh, there's just so much idle there, but coming back home, Stroh has been trained, and as fights go, that is a good Russian fight, that is, that's a really good Russian fight, there's, there's a lot of co club and chasing the Cossacks to the northern side of the map, but the action is in Russian's base at the moment, and there's so many Strelets engaging, and a couple Cossacks snow, and there's still three Cossacks held in reserve as well, this entire na native army getting cleaned up, now that we've got enough amount of Strelets on the map, this is some really, really good play here from Russia. And although the score is still looking French favoured, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. He has to have a full remass at the moment, and we do have Strelitz in a decent position. He's got a lot of gold, but it's, it's the hunt he needs. He needs to move on to the hunt. There's a hunt down here, relatively. Musk's actually training here from the blockhouse, now sieging the caravel. There's no villagers over here, so it's not actually super critical if that goes down, but it's the berries he needs to protect urgently. Now Strelitz moving forward. The... <laughs> The um, CDBs have moved forward onto the next berry patch, staying with the army. Caravel is trying their best to uh, get a siege, but no, he, he wants to stay away from the pond, and I think so far not looking too bad. Potential side dock down here from the general will be very, very smart in this situation. Strats moving forward. Yeah, it's going to come across as a Klamath Rifleman. The thing is, these guys only do 11 attack versus. Strelitz, Strelitz do 9, they have 
a little bit less range. Kamas only has 16 range, as that says. Obviously, they have higher HP. So, as a single Kamath Rifleman, is so much better than a single Shredder, but I don't think that's really the issue. Shredder's as a price tag. About 37 food, 10 wood. They're really good. They're really, really good. Pass do come in, but now with a decent mass of Musk Cossack playing behind. Russia has finally taken the score lead in this situation. It's actually feeling comfortable to take a, a push out of his base. Letting it, the strength try and exchange as much as possible, but so we might see a drag move on. Oh, the drag move comes in! The drag move, box, flip, switch, army, trick, whatever you want to call it. Musk strikes intertwines, decent high damage output, and the Cossacks have been on top of the Rifleman and Hussars most of the time. Nukas are only coming in, but they haven't actually reached their target. As a fight goes, this is a great fight here for Russia. French CDB is still moving around them to hunt's not too bad, but reinforcements here from Russia looking pretty good. Pierre Beaumont is now sending the woods potential big batch of Klamath and Hus, but uh, most of the army has gone down, and I think that that's a, is a position that's going to be too tough to recover from now. The general leading in the score by quite substantial amounts. Now sending in the advanced arsenal in H2 just to just to try and cement his position. Not looking to keep that shipment reserved for H3, but happy to take his position now and takes the second game, leading the series 2-0 after the second game. Well played. Seems to mix in Kamath Nuka buff when? Uh, um, it, it's, hard to, it's hard to say. I Okay, let's put it this way. The Kamath don't feel... The, the, the Kamath Rifleman don't feel special. But these are skirmishers. So they're only good versus heavy infantry. And versus muskers, they, they tear them apart. Nuka, uh, they're very good versus buildings. They're not good. They're not great at raiding. They do a job versus cavalry. So we've got units here which do a half a job versus cavalry, destroy musks. But the Stratus are unchallenged. So as a pure composition point of view, Nuka Klamath, it doesn't feel that special. I don't feel, looking at it, I don't feel that it's super threatening. And the general has kind of played that to his advantage. But realizing, but okay, let's put it this way. The early mass here from French was actually very impressive. There was a lot of stuff going on here, and the general was having to play super defensive vills and TC defensive blockhouse. Like most of the time, we see Russia putting blockhouse mid map, but this is as close to the town center as you can get, and uh, playing from the back, getting a solid, sturdy position, solid base, and then pushing out with the advantage once the kind of late game scaling came in. 53 vills for the general. Pierre Beaumont resigned on 40 CDB and um, rather expensive units. It's actually a, a rather more entertaining game than it may have seemed because there's a lot of intricate details there. All that time, I think there's a lot of micro of the strats and the TC fire. So that's some good gameplay there. Mutual unit count. Probably the best way. <laughs> Every unit apart from the Hussar is a one pop this game, even the Cossacks. The early push looking pretty decent. 17 quality units coming out there from Pierre Beaumont. But uh, the, the 13 Strelet first card was just enough to keep them at bay. And then uh, everything else was pretty fine afterwards. The card order here from General, uh, not fully on board with. I think he could have switched a few cards around. But overall, the game went on looking pretty decent. There's moments times it was looking very dodgy. But uh, I think a couple of Musketeers here went down pretty cheaply. But once the Cossacks and then the Strelets came... Um, came back out again. A lot of this was um, Cossack raiding, um, native units chasing after running villages around the map. Yeah, the masses came in, and just just the the production of units now. Once the economy is going, double barracks, triple barracks, single stable. We are a single stable, I think. Maybe double stable at some point. No, still a single stable, but uh, certainly double racks production at the very least in terms of strelats. Good play. Enjoyed that one. And uh, we'll move on into the next game. Right, our next game, I have been informed, is Jarrod Rock playing the Brits, Pierre playing Germany, and I need to take the quickest of comfort breaks. I'll be back in a second.
Right, I am back. I didn't see anybody comment on the technical aspect of it, so I kind of need to have a quick check myself just to see. Uh, I think it was much improved compared to previous game, but I'm just very curious if it... So I'm just trying to diagnose technical uh, situations at the moment w w with respect to whether it's a um, my issue or um, I can't run the game and the program at the same time. So I'm kind of looking at the Spanish game at the moment, not looking pretty... Yeah, if we go into the Russian game, it's it's better. It's not great. It's better though, I think. I think I'll leave it. I think I'll leave it as it is in that situation. Yeah, that's uh, that's certainly more than fine. That is that would do. That will do, donkey. That will do. Port of Vils. Cossacks are back of French based in. Yeah, audio sounds pretty decent as well. I'll take that. Looking good. Right. Guys, game number three. General Warwick's current 2 0 up. This is a best of seven, so we've still got a way to go. Can he take the third game as well? Let's find out. Alright, Garja, welcome to chat. Sompu Konku, welcome to chat. You two are both. Greatly appreciated to be here. Offer so much to the chat. Kappa. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the third game of this semi-final series between General Warwick and Pierre Beaumont. The General currently leading 2-0 versus Pierre. Decent game so far. Third game, we're on the map Punjab. General playing as the British, Pierre Perman taking as taking the Germans into this game. Germany versus Britain, very classic matchup in terms of the Age of Empires 3 series. Traditionally been slightly German favoured, but I think Brits have recently come back into strong form. And looking at the starting conditions here for Brits, this map is full of hunts. There's a hunt in the river, hunt in front of the base, hunt to the side, hunt in base berries. I think the general will be very happy just to sit back on this map and um, start booming with manor houses, mass units. Pierre's point of view is a little bit different here. Not too many gold mines around. So once his first two gold mines run out, he has to move a significant distance to get onto the next mine. Maybe tempting to play a bit of bow pike just to try and prolong some of the gold mines? Question mark? Maybe not. Um... H3, go for a timing push and pray that it, you crack the nut on your first attempt. It's, it's a tricky map to play in Germany on. I, I will say, you, you do know, you always know where the mines are. Two in the bottom, two in the middle, three on top. They're all 2k gold mines, but um, you know, they're quite a bit of distance away from your starting town centres. So, Pierre Beaumont will have to play very, very nicely and just look at the hunts near Brit's base. Now, I would say that one, two, three, four. For starting, it's relatively the same as one, two, three, four. And starting, this hunt here is a little bit closer than this hunt, but both players can herd it in. You can't be asking too much more for this even when you're playing as a Brit from this point of view. Let's have a look at the treasure so far. The general picking up 55 food. Pierre Beaumont taking up 120. Very nice. I think that was like all the macaques he was working on. It's like a 10 macaque treasure, a 7 macaque treasure. So he certainly got his reward after working on that one for quite a time. Not really seen too much more apart from starting treasures. 40 woods for the general, 50 for Pierre. Nothing too much more afterwards there. So now the general taking on the 75 wood treasure. Pierre Beaumont on the north side of the map. Ooh, 130 wood, but to try and kite a lion while one lion is actively... Oh, this is going to be... He saved a crack shot. If he could take this treasure, that'd be absolutely huge. The only problem is, though, his explorer's on one side of the map and the train post on the other, and this is... This is awkward, to say the least. It's not, it's not bad, but it's awkward. We may see a set of wagon having to do, to do the deed of the trading post, but... Might even push Pierre Beaumont into Settler Wagon going forward for Outpost. Do we, do we see the Alp, the uh, Settler Wagon going down south? To find out uh, what Pierre's right. plan is, really. Oh, keep those on. I was looking for fog. That's what I'm looking to see. I'll 
One villager here, maybe Herdin. Don't think as a regular settler will take a TP. Maybe Germany just being happy to do with place of mines, steel traps, and a church. We might see Germany going for the steel traps here to compensate the lack of XP and the saving of going to church as a trading post. Welcome to the chat, Aries. We see Jerry Muno here as well. Flappy Bits thinking Brits can go possibly wars. Oh, they're still talking about the Brit-Russia -Rus uh, matchup. Brem thinks this is Opti versus Yuki. Oh, interesting. Yuki might be one of the players. Um, realistically, when I'm watching games like this, I'm like, oh, this is cool, because I don't actually get a sense of who's who. I could really sit and analyse it, but I... I don't know. I'm... I'm <laughs> I know the point of this whole tournament is to be bothered who's who, but I'm not too bothered who's who. I'm actually just more interested in the games. That's my that's my number one quality here. And I'll let you guys hype up who is who. But uh, it's decent Brit Hut. This, this German rickshaw is thinking, oh my god, what do I have to do to defeat all this hunt? It's, yeah. it's so easy to protect that. It's Everything is so centralised. There's decent line of sight as well. We, we've got a... Um, <sighs> got a mango growth from even Germany going forward but it's just being put down there for their sakes we do see Ford barracks the trading post did get a built in the end but Germany is down in terms of tempo quite a bit he's going for 70 wood card one instead of three setup backs but he's got so much wood back base so two houses coming down to get to the 40 pop but uh maybe five bows straight away but I think kind of feel like if you're going 700 wood you might want to go tower first in some in something like that three saddlebangs may have been a better opening currently pierre now is not sitting on a shipment meanwhile general work behind this open up longbows i believe he may have seen this yes he has seen the barracks scouted out with the mango grove and just probably put down just nearby if, if the mango grove could have been placed here to block through the trees that'd been very very nice i would have said from the British point of view, but if you see barracks, just longbow play, longbow pike, longbow musk, longbow, just longbows destroy crossbows. It's not even close. We've seen so many games of Malta trying to take on Britain H2, doesn't quite work. That villager will go down, unfortunately. Somebody hasn't got their great coats just yet, and uh, we'll be guess clicking that button in five, four, three, two and a half, two, one and a half. There, yeah, oh no, he's gone gangsaw! Ah! Little Minx. Longbow's pushing back some Ulans. 26 Verge is not a loss at the moment here from General's point of view. He's going to hope for a little bit more. Now, Pierre Beaumont is up to eight settler wagons. So his, the, the, the German economy is better than Brits at the moment in time. So he wants to maybe push forward with nine crossbow okay. two Ulans, but I don't think he wants to get too much work done here, especially with town center, outpost, and more longbows. We did get great coats, did we? No, we did not get great coats just yet. It might be being researched, but he needs them now. Okay, they're in research. Okay, they're there now in the floor. First volley kills one crossbow. Second volley nearly kills another two, and the longbow stays alive with six HP. Back raid. Oh, Lance, my cat deny the stable. It does just deny the stable for the time being. Village is moving out to build this as the Ulans get tempted back. But the town center and the longbows will melt the remaining Ulans, and that's relatively good. Low HP, that can get punched down, and I think it will get punched down. The general will see this, and he does. Yep, that goes down. But ugh, sneaky back Ulan there. That will be looking. And actually, ooh, these two villas are unprotected, and then they may go down. That vill may go down as well. So far, oh, he doesn't see, he doesn't see. Okay, the bill goes down, but the longbows will pick up the Ulan for it. Just about. We've got heat seeking <laughs> longbow archers. Makes you think about um, Age of Empires 4 when you see those um, missiles locking onto their target. Germany has secured the three TP stagecoach. So that's, that was the play with the 700 wood. So, okay, so Pierre going 700 wood first, took trading post line, and then followed up with the set of wagons. Currently, the army is nowhere near this, to the level that the general is at, but the economy looking pretty decent, looking to age it behind. But uh, general sensing this disposition here from Germany's point of view is pushing out. Oh, he, hasn't, he hasn't seen the house. Pierre has not seen the manor house, and how lucky can those two villes be? Almost feels like that the um that jazz song. 
How lucky can those two veals be? Yeah. He went for the raid and didn't scout me. I have to work on the lyrics. That doesn't quite flow. But that forward barracks is going down. General must see the training post line. It's very tempting now to move down onto these TPs. Deny the training post. Get in on the action yourself. Defensive Musk pushing the Olanza away. And uh, still, a lot of hunting base. Looking pretty decent. Pierre Beaumont halfway up. The General maybe looking to click up very, very... Well, no. He's just staying in H2. Mass in Huss now as well. Try to get some play-ins. H2 Brits is pretty strong versus uh, Germany. Even in the third age. It's just... The one thing I find... Not... The most annoying about Brits, but one thing, it's Brits is very easy. It helps, uh, let's say, lower elo uh, level, li lower elo level players. Is but Brits age two is absolutely fine. Come You've got on, so much know. population space. All you really need is lots of food and gold. Similar proportions for musketeer hussars and just just spam the units, and you can't go too wrong. Try and collapse on the stay on the crossbows of Minutemen. Minutemen must be low HP now. Oh, just been called. Raiding in base again, so more. Well, that's going down, but Musketeers ready to receive. War wagons about to come out to capture, but so far, quite a lot of crossbows gone down in a relatively decent trade there for General. He's going to try and pull back the Husk, but maybe want to just stay there and try and finish the job off. Musketeers longbows trying to catch up. Is actually getting onto the train post line, and is sieging the other, so. Maybe. The general wants to just abandon this train post and secure that this far train post gets torn down and the middle train post gets built. That does get built. Just a couple of longbows just pe pull it, pushing back these vet war wagons. Pierre's got seven of these. This, this should be his time to strike. And uh, the general desperately needs uh, a couple more longbows as well. TP down in the west, TP down into the east. Job's done. Return back to base and uh, play for time. Bandit says, say hi to me. Good afternoon, Bandit. Welcome to today's stream on Esoc TV. Yes. Second TP ta being taken down. The age up has now been in queue. And you see that Jenna has completely changes how he wants to go. So he's going to retreat. Smart raid here oh, from the Hussars into the gold mine. He won't see any vills here, but that's okay. He sees that that gold mine hasn't been touched. He knows that these two gold mines are still um, being taken in base. He knows that this gold mine hasn't been touched. So he just knows everybody's in here. It might not be worth to raid. It might be worth just keeping his hus nearby to call upon them later on. Pierre sees this. Oh, this, this, okay. this is actually very really smart here from General. Pierre sees the hus raid. He pulls back the war wagons to deal with this. The skirms come with to not be killed in the open. What this does is buy the general time to age up. Once the age up comes in, he gets the techs in. And the power spike that Germany has over Brits right now is relatively short-lived because the general will soon age up. He's got one barrack, so he's, he's going to have to upgrade these units one after the other. He does have a stable as well. He's got some TP line. He's got some vills and some gold. There's a gold mine over here. Some vills to hunt him, but we're looking pretty defensive and safe. More manor houses being built, likely to go back, likely to gather from this mine. Come One on, husk the checking man, the silver mine, not seen anything. Age up here is a little bit slow. It's really awkward. Do you, do you train units transitional? Do you wait until the upgrades? And he's got a one musketeer queue. That should complete by the time. So another batch of five. He looks at this. He sees Vatolans. He sees a war wagon. It doesn't say too much cavalry, so maybe he tends to go more kind of hus more longbow heavy in that situation he's pushing out looking for the hunt looking onto the mine i don't think he wants to go too far though oh hus catching two islands to the north but uh likely to see maybe falk yeah falk and upgrade units one upgrades in uh, at this moment time i'll be frantically sending off my food just to ensure that this is getting researched as well vet hussars he still has seven on the field but it's still worth upgrading Vet Musk's now in queue. Stable is idle. Could be queuing up a Dragoon instead, actually. That's, te that's tempting. <laughs> Harry's is trying to guess who the player is by the fact that they're drag boxing. <laughs> that's a... Oh! That's a, that's a decent raid on these settlers. And that actually will force the aggressive response here, but we still need to wait for the Longbow's 
the um, vet techs. We've, still, we've got vet longbows, not vet muskets. Going on a single racks. The uh, husks are going for a raid, but really to be in this fight. What's going on? We're, we're fighting before the falcons in. The falcons are relatively exposed at the moment, and it, there's a lot. There's a lot of being asked from these 23 longbows. To be honest, there's a lot being asked. Hus dive in, but everybody's on this back. Gold mine, yeah. Germany's still pretty comfortable. Remember, Germany's still on their gold mines because he went infantry age two, didn't spend too much um, gold on Ulan, so he has that extra gold in base to keep him alive for longer. Set wagons do have great coats. Nice raid, but oh, the wall wagons pop out, and I don't think any set wagons will go down there. Will any? Oh, one does go down. Maybe two? Two set wagons go down? Oh, that's. That's that's a naughty little raid there, that is. Pierre won't be happy one bit. Ulan here gets picked off by the Huss. Going to Goons now behind us. We kind of desperately need a second Rax. That's that's gonna be our priority here, so yeah, go go build that down maybe. The facts moving forward to siege, but I think Germany can crush this. There's there's just not enough stuff and the general has been throwing away units to raids quite often. He's guessing rewards for this, but I think there's an opportunity there for Pierre just to dive in. He's trying to move around, get some Vil snipes. There's actually a lot of potential for Vil kills on the top, and I think General sees this. He's going to move quite a few, a few of us away, but leave enough behind. It's like a little, like, hey, take this. Take this trade while I uh, m mass even more units. It's a potential case. I often do that, actually. Is say, like, okay, here's some units. Yes, you killed these units. Very good, well done. But you'll never he'll never check for these six. He might have seen these, but yeah, no, he's like, oh, I've killed everybody over here. This is good. Good day hunting. Little does he know. Oh, you know, yeah, he's he's only he's only here for sieging. Meanwhile, Brits just pushing in, he's like, Yeah, I'm happy with this. Clear up the train line again. Explorer goes down, those exposed, musks moving to defend. Oh, it's a lot of dynamic play here. Sees that the mine has just been taken. That indicates the starting mine's out. Oh, Germany currently no gold income, and he's sieging that that bottom training post as well. Looking pretty decent. Hooray indeed! Pierre Bowman's point of view feels on the gold mine, and yeah, General now knows that the game is up. Well, not the game is up. He knows that he has to try and control gold mines. I think after losing the northern position, he realizes they're all on that top gold mine. It's not the end of the world. Eight skirms now being sent here from Germany. He's only gone through a cav combat. That's interesting. That makes a lot of sense, actually. He's got so much cavalry. And I'm I'm very worried here for the general in the sense of there's so much strength in this German army. When it If and when it does connect, Lombo's pushing forward. Yeah. They do see their targets. There's okay. There's, there are some dragoons. Oh, more dragoons coming in might be enough of a force here from Germany as well. Outpost has been scouted and the cavalry want to try and push this, push in and try and punish this as well. Skirms do not really want to trade with the longbow. Fox making that um, trade even harder. Crossbows will dive in but will get picked off by the outpost and reinforcements pretty quickly. Yeah, Longbow is just adding in waves of volleys. The Ulans are pulling trigger. They want to go in, but the uh, Musk's nearby. Dragoons are nearby. As long as they're body blocked, that doesn't really actually matter. And yeah, the Ulans will dive in, but uh, certainly good positioning so far here from the General. War wagons are, at the moment, relatively unchanged. I think the Longbows are just set moving nearest response, but all the Ulans are met. The XP donators, we salute you for all your noble effort there, but you just got XP donated. The war wagon still stands in, and Dra Dragoon's pushing back. The longbow Dragoon combo, insane. And these were Cav Combat. <laughs> they were Cav Combat. They were Cav Combat. And uh, they they got melted. Score Lee looking very good for Brits now. And he's just going to advance on the gold mines. He knows he's got the bomb gold mine control. He's got the TP line controlled. Here from the general, he just wants double stable, double racks production. He's sending longbows. Longbows to the forward town center. Uh, outpost likely. He's killing the war wagons, but he knows he can just. He, he can move the musketeers up. Keep the longbows here, and that's going to be pretty much uh, too tough there for Pierre to come back from the situation. Really close game, I think. That, that engagement, that fight, could. The longer it went on, the, the harder it was ever going to be there for Pierre, especially after uh, waiting for a cav combat. I think once the cav combat comes in, that's your go time. 
Animus saying content, boys. You're welcome, welcome. We got some really good games so far. Pierre doing his best to hold into the situation. A lot of skirms here. We'll get a, a, a relatively, a relative exchange, but the economy here for Brits is just too good at the moment. He's even left the facts to chill because there's too valuable to lose. And uh, Pierre's looking for gold mines. And he's kind of been out. And yeah, the GG's been called. And uh, the general is up to 3 0 versus Pierre in his best of seven. The general in fine form, I may say. So playing very, very well today. No balance saying, yeah, Pierre's Yuki. Well, maybe, maybe a lot of people are thinking that Pierre's Yuki, but who the hell is General Warwick? That's the question we need to ask. I wouldn't know. <laughs> Classic saying General Izad. Of course, Izad wants to come himself General Warwick. General could be Opti, could be the magician. Kind of feel that maybe, maybe, maybe General Warwick's been playing too standard here for Opti, but then again, the Spanish water and age in game one was looking very, very um, good. Uh, or non-standard, so that's potentially the, the the trademarks of an Optimus Prime on that one. What to find out? Nice little calf push in there. Did actually take down best part of ten light infantry. Four wagons come out to pick up the remaining, but uh, couldn't actually. There was never a moment where Pierre Beaumont was like, right, I've got enough mass to smash into Brit's eco or smash into Brit's military. Did get a really nice raid at one point. About ten vils, ten vils. Uh, there's only six. But uh, Pierre, the General Box also has been very good at raiding. And actually, Germany got raided more than Brits. That's a very interesting uh, situation that was, I will say. That middle fight, the XP... Military population, populations are equal than Germany's in a bad time because Ulan's are too pop, but they're like, they represent 1.5 in terms of damage, durability, and effectiveness, so... Yeah, there was more stuff there for the general. Falks well protected, getting some good exchanges on the skirmishers. Longbow's musks. Musks were kind of dispensable, but the goons did so well. Excellent. Right, we'll move on into the next game. I'm sure they might have started that one already. I've tried having the overlay on, however, I've noticed a reduction in performance while casting, so I will um, I will continue on in this situation, right? We're looking for all non ram maps in general where I've started potentially. <laughs> Flappy bits. I, uh, I cannot have that level of banter on Esoc TV. That is too banterous for us to handle. We, we are a boring community. We, we cannot level, handle that banter. But uh, let us begin. And I'm going to turn my lights in the, in the bedroom. It's getting a bit dark now. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the fourth game of this semi-final. Best of seven. We're on match point because General Warwick has been on fire this series. He's been playing super, super well to a very high standard. And in the fourth game, he's taken the French on the map Florida. So General Warwick spawning in the blue to the southwest. Pierre Beaumont spawning in as the British civilization to the northeast of the map in the color yellow. Brit versus France. We did see a very strong game from, from Britain's last game with the General Warwick taking the win over the Germans. I'm kind of expecting to see a similar level of play here from Pierre as the British here. Pierre, the Brits are very, very strong. See Florida looking very good. Um, market start as well. Double manners. I think that's going to help Pierre a little bit more than the General. Possibly. Possibly not. Do see a TP start here for General Warwick. Maybe tempted to buy at a market for a house, but it looks like he's just chopping his way naturally for a house. 
So he's not going to go for a 12 10 shenanigans. He's going to. Oh, he's going hunting dogs as well. Squeezing in hunting dogs, a TP and a house is rather. That's pretty greedy. I gotta say, if he can make this work, that'd be pretty good play. Nice double hunt in front of Pierre's base. He needs to secure this double hunt before it runs off too far. Hunt on the side and a turkey hunt in the back is disappointing, but um, this four deer hunt's quite tasty, I will say. But uh, yeah, if General can pull this off, all I'm gonna say is it looks like General has practiced his Florida French openings here. And um, yeah, what a start here for for France. Looking, f I assume it's going to be a, still a 14 CDB age yet, but uh, it's going to have some greater momentum in transition. First TP down as well. Vill's in it two minutes flat. It's looking good. A couple ships here, maybe Eaton to help speed up that process. Working on an 80 food treasure as well. The, the, the plan so far is working out nicely there for the general. Meanwhile, Pierre Beaumont, 17 villas in base, double mana. Yes. Uh, hasn't gone for hunting dogs. Has to wood for it. Going for Gangsaw in anticipation he's going to overgather for his um, age up. So he wants to get his tech in as fast as possible to help him in transition. Just playing nice and standard at the moment. And the click up. Going to age up with the governor here. Makes sense. Get an outpost a little bit forward, protecting this double hunt. And I think that's where Pierre will be sending a villager to herd in straight away. Actually got a herd in the back hunt first, which I think, yeah, that makes sense. But it might even just be a sign of just a, a playing it very cautiously in the final game. Drew really want to be herding in this front hunt straight away. Maybe, yeah, he's just he's just basically going to secure all nearby hunts and just suck them in like a hoover. And try and keep them as close to the town centre. Let's look at our, a, at our Brit player's deck. No eight bills in the third age has a thousand wood. Double ship shipments, but no naval combat or any fishing upgrades. No exotic hardwoods in the first age here for Brit players. He's only got 24 cards. He's missing the cards. He's feeling that confident, but he doesn't need all 25. Uh, H5 cards there. No, H3 cards, shall I say. <laughs> Looking very, very standard with the five husks in there nicely. Got nine musks. I don't think we often see nine musketeers in the Brit versus French matchup coming out to play, so interested that comes in. No cav cards in H2. It has triple musk cards, so double musks in H2, musk cards in H3, but no cav HP at all. You'd be surprised to not see team musketeer HP replaced for cav HP in that situation. The general aging up. Uh, with a 14 vil age up, 1 vil in queue behind. Look, his tech's already got hunting dogs. Gangsaw's already been researched, which is actually quite nice. You don't see France going for early Gangsaw in this situation. Does lose Explorer, not the end of the world. Oh, oh, here we go. Natives, natives. Whoop, 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 whoop. Caribs. Short range archers. Very high attack, actually, with bonuses versus all longbows, pikes, musks. Relatively speaking, it's a pretty decent bet and a good way to try and force a response, but uh, should be relatively easy to deal with with defensive longbows, long range, building fire. Is it? Well, what can I say? The other thing is playing Brits on Florida is always very good. We do have Seminole and Carib spawn every single game. Both of them have archer techs and bonuses, so maybe be tempted if you're playing Brits. Or other archer sieves like Malta, like Japan, in this case France, to try and secure to get that going. But here comes our Kiwi Blue Guns. Five. Sp Look at this. Okay, so it's five speed, 160 HP. Are the Kiwi Blue Guns slept on? Now, I know that Sweden has like a 15 carry Blue Gunner in H3. They are only H2 units, but they do so well. This speed, they just run. They, they're going to run in shoot something and run out. They're going to cause maximum havoc and yet they're going straight behind. And somewhere there's an archer tech which gives you bonus versus villagers. I don't think he... Oh, he has got that already! <laughs> oh, the general has been an absolute prick. That is naughty to play, that is. That is... Uh, you do not want to play against... Uh, just... In they go. Oh, he's, he's looking for Vils, but he, could still, he still has to fight versus the infantry. But you can see the idea here. There are villagers out on the map. 
with the manor houses and income to carry below going to, to shoot some poison darts. 38. That's 38 attack each into a villager. These guys are going to get... Uh, it's just like a better version of Vulan Raiden, isn't it? Yeah, that, that, that villager's down. The other villager's running away. Carry Blug on the back line. That outpost can't protect everybody, unfortunately. And this Vill going to come back in. And it takes those two Carry Blug guns. A couple of shots to take that down. But a bit of Miss Micro there. More Blug guns running at the back. I think it's just, this is just to distract by time. Once the goal comes in, he's going to transition to a potential age up here. Or just mass cavalry and stay Carry Blug going to play. Razapara. Razapara, indeed. It, it, like I say, even if these carry blood guns would decimate these longbows. It, that's like you took. But it, the general is just the general. Okay, the general just wants to vill raid, which I like the idea, concept, and strategy. But when you when you have nineteen with a one point five multiplier versus all infantry, and you're up against your archer counterpart, which you know, they also have bonuses versus heavy infantry, so they don't have bonuses versus the uh, Caribs, take the opportunity to win that trade. Take the opportunity to win that little fight where you can. We know that Hussar's coming in, so maybe looking to try and pick those off. Yes, he's just picked off the Explorer, but um, potentially could have won the Longbow trade there. Doesn't have the same rate of fire as Longbow, so I, I, I can understand how Longbow's kind of in numbers overpower that matchup, but I'm, I'm kind of confused whether the general wants us to. It just wants to raid or, or take the fight. Now he's coming in, but he's already lost quite a decent amount of caribs. More caribs coming in. Caribs coming from the top side to so try and kind of surround. So here's going to be our first juicy fight of the game. Musk's straight into melee, but our carry blowgun is going to focus him down. Hussars onto the longbows. A couple of longbows exposed to the right side. That's going to be a really nice, tasty pickup. Musk's moving across. Native Scout actually taking some good damage there and just distracting a little bit. And that's going to be a decent hold there for Pierre Bowman. General has to run away. Uh, do we see any um, action on the north side? We don't see on the north side. Yeah, he's just he's just continuously to run his stuff around, but just runs past um, longbows and gets clapped as a result. But Huss raid the back. Huss on the longbows and cabs are running away from the musks putting in. So the musks got to work overtime here to try and defend. So many mana houses being thrown in base defensive here for Pierre Beaumont. And the Hussars charging in some decent Vill picks on the back line. And Huss charging in. Potential for a four Vill raid, I think. Four Vill will go down, likely. Caribs will get some good value as well. They should be able to get some shots on. Only three going down there. Minutemen were called as well. And Hussars just going to get out of there. Age up nearly in here for General Warwick. Pierre Beaumont, I reckon he's still hanging on. He's, he's still just fully training units in the second age. To secure that position and then punish the age up as well. Pull little tricking, pull tricking the blowguns out there. That's a nice little play. Defensive stance here for yes. the Hussars. That's one thing I've noticed for players need to do more. Yes. Defensive stance for Huss. I, feel I think now. there's a there's like a a slight perception that defensive Huss move faster after an attack, but that might be like a visual glitch I saw on maybe Ari. Maybe it's not think maybe it's just, just how they position, but this dense block it's so much easier to pass through cities and just trap bills and just get a very strong, concentrated attack of Hussars. Very good for raiding, that is. Creed Blowgun's going for a backdoor raid again. Luckily... Well, actually, this line of sight here for the Seminole Flag is not actually providing too much line of sight. Has, any, has anybody else actually noticed that the line of sight for the native villagers has kind of somewhat collapsed again? Or not? I have no idea why this line of sight provides so much, but this one can't even see past its own settlement. I think some of these are bugged in terms of line of sight. It is interesting. Whatever happens, the decision of, the, of it, this should be very reliable at what it does. But a uh, nice little play there. Nice raiding. Another field goes down. I think I think these um oh, 28 vills in the town 28 vills in the town center oh my god so many in there I think carry blue guns just about survived three town center shots okay they survived two and get killed on the third so nice little ideas all over the park we're in the third stage now the carry blue guns are last uh, year's fashion we're now going into skirm huss play 
the general may look to go for vet um, hussars here. He does have enough, but he just wants to start making sure that he has enough dragoons to deal with these raiding husks of Brit as well. Yeah, he just he just sees these husks. He wants to chase them down. Only have one goon out for the first batch. Animus, yes. Well, the, the creeps have already had that villager bonus in. So he, he really early on in the game, he's had uh, times two blowguns versus Vil. So 38 attack versus villagers. And obviously, if you have, let's say, native combat on them, then they cross multiply so they can do stuff like I mean, 44, 45 attack versus Vil. Certainly significant, annoying, and uh, raiding. And I know that Animus wants to, be, wants to be trying that on a stream shortly afterwards. Calm down, Animus. Patience. Still in this game. Yeah, but but um, both the Seminoles and both the Caribs buff archer base units. So buff longbows, both buff crossbows, Yumi archers, Fulani archers, and just any anything like that. Yeah, there's a 10% in here. I think this other one is a 15% if Crab got correctly um, remembered. So, yeah, there's a lot of potential for... Um, a lot of potential for Archer upgrades. The Seminoles also, you know, they get upgraded, but they're not the greatest units. They might be good for their cost. They only are 50 food, 50 wood. Oh, Classier yeah, Batch. Five Batch coming in. But Pierre actually has a decent amount of units to defend this. He has a lot of Huss, and now he's into the next age. Should be able to research veteran Hussars, get this block, and yeah, another batch of five Huss as well. That's exactly the card, but he needs to hold on. He's got 14 Huss, soon to be 19 veteran units. Krasia has come out a couple, long, a couple of veteran Dragoons. Very nice, but I don't think that's going to be enough to do this. He is, is looking. He's looking. He wants to dive in. He's thinking of it, but no, he's just... He's already lost one cross, yeah, and the second will go down to the longbows, and a, a mid-map town centre is greedy as. That is too greedy in a situation. I always find, I always feel disrespected when my opponent throws down a mid-map training post in matchups like this, when they're playing either like the French or the Germans. Just not what you need. There's just so much longbow, so much vert hus. Oh, this is not good. This is not good, and I think we're in a bit of a pickle here from General Rock's point of view. So much... The longbows are standing and they are delivering rapid payloads onto their opponents and the French army has been destroyed. I think that is an unrecoverable position. The GG has been called and Pierre Beaumont calls one back. Takes the series just to 3-1. Still in favour of the general but um, oh pardon me we're not there just yet. Good game. The early caribs here from the from General Rock was very good and had high impact. However, I feel that the control of the units here was a bit I'm not gonna say lacking, but I think I think the problem with the general had was he had he had a target in mind. He had the target for the Caribs to kill the villagers. But there's opportunities for the Caribs to take fights with musketeers and longbows, but declines to take that fight. And quite a lot quite a lot Quite often we saw quite a few units just getting picked off uh, for not much uh, return. So maybe a cut one or two dying around here. I think it's like a five vill shipment, but it would have been more vills. A couple vills here and everywhere getting raided, but um, not super enough. And the general never really had a mass of units going to the third age, where Pierre was always growing that army actually, winning those early trades, and. There must have been the best part about 20 creeps, 15 creeps going down for little value. There are some creeps who got some good returns on Vil kills. But just look at the trickle. General Warwick should be up to about 25, matching the population of the, the British army at the very least. So when the Hussars do come in later on, there's enough creeps to kind of do the damage as the Huss tank. So the end result doesn't really surprise me, um, especially with the economy of the Brits being pretty decent. Still lots of in-base hunt. During the time that the French players aiding up was able to, able to stabilise. Uh, Mass and Hussars going Vet Huss, sending five Huss, card one. Very smart play. And that was enough to get the game win over the general. General trying to go for mid-map town centre. But a bit too greedy that was, unfortunately. Didn't work that game. But maybe other games it would have worked. Apart from that, yeah. R really enjoyed that one again. And we'll move on to the next game. Cheeky Pikeman, is there another matchup today? Uh, there is. I can't quite remember the time. I want to say 7pm. 
I think. But if we look at our challenge, you get to see the other brackets and the other matchup. And that's going to involve... In the blue corner is Major Cooper. And in the red corner is Kanye K. Or Kanye... 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 Whatever the rename of the um, <laughs> Canyon K in the DE. You know, it's like can Canyon Click, Canyon something, Canyon Nook, Canyon Nook. I don't know. Apparently can Canyon K was too on PC. And you can probably clip that as well. I think there's a snort in there somewhere. Oh, guys, so it's scheduled for 18 GMT, but I think we're starting after this one. Oh, who's casting that? Maybe. It, that's out of my that's out of my cord, but yeah, sounds good. Depends if the other players are available and ready to play, is the uh, question there. Canuck. Can yuck. Can yuck. <laughs> ah, banter, banter. Still haven't casted a game on Indonesia yet. It's really annoying me. I really want to cast a game on it. I don't believe it's in the um, semi-final pool anyway, but um, most players ban that map before it gets played. All right, guys, welcome to the fifth game in semi-final number one between General Warwick and Pierre Beaumont. General Warwick playing as a Japanese civilization spawning to the north in the color blue. Pierre Beaumont playing as a Russian spawning to the south of the map in the color red. The map is Pampas Sierras, a no TP map, an ESOC classic. One of the, the fans' favorites. Always comes back for tournaments. One of the one of the true standouts, no trading post maps. Nice little um, scenery, scenery lots of diversion scenery. Cliffs to the west, llamas in the west. Flat ground, quite choky in the middle with the native posts, and then to the east, it's a bit more of a expansive opening with this middle, with this nice little river passing through small, um, chokeable points. It's interesting to see that Pierre Beaumont though is declining to go for llamas. I think this is a bit of a mistake here from Pierre. Yes, he does see ninety wood, but he's up against Russia. Russia, they can't take on pirates on their own, and Pierre Beaumont has given up three hundred and fifty HP for this treasure. And given up pretty much every livestock there is. The Ultra Ritual from Japan, the second one, is picking up so many llamas. And this is happy days here for uh, General Rorik, I think. He's going to love this open. And he's he's up six llamas. Okay, five llamas. So Pierre Bonnet will actually pick up the final three. But there was opportunity, sir. I think what happened here from the General is he's anticipated that Russia will come up here and take on some of these animals himself. So he hasn't actually gone... To and tried to catch them himself because <laughs> you're a good player. Why would you not pick up your own llamas to your side? Uh, but the general will walk in, he'll see another one and be like, oh my god, actually, there might be a potential for a clean sweep. So he's going to keep on looking, but uh, no, Pierre's just going to pick up, pick up the two and call it a day. One thing I've noted here from the general in base shrines, we've already built a shrine on some deers, but also got some shrines on some llamas. Two viewers coming straight away. We still may see two sugar shrine come down. And that's still a pretty good, um, still a pretty good age up. Even if you're not going, um, can't uh, not going consulate or you're not going heavenly carny, cami, heavenly carny. Just imagine um, Japan shrines turn into little mini carny martyrs. That would be so so strong. But uh, with all this livestock here, six llamas and two sheep, I'd love to see the general throw down the two sugar shrine here. Random, just away from hunts, and put all your livestock on that. I'm sure. Uh, well, there's there's no hunt here to attract onto this one, so you can't leave it empty. That's a shame. I'm sure he'll work on something. Market start for Japan. Yeah, I. Both players obviously start off with these small in-base treasures, so there may have been an early coin treasure available for Japan. So these villas have already got their one of their food tax, so it kind of pays off. 15 vil age up, and he's going to throw down a carny for... Oh, toy gates! Okay. So this is going for the whole XP, low shrine play. It's a shame. When you have this many livestock, it, you, you kind of are hoping for like a really good play from it, because it the, the fact that livestock can absolutely supercharge with the sugar shrine and the sugar shrine boost all the other shrines, it's just one of those... Sometimes it is just too good to be true, but in this case, I think the general just wants... At the daimyo and just kind of aggression in H2 with um, 
a lot of shipments, XP being um, gifted, more XP being gifted for train bounties, kill bounties, everything just gets faster with the Tory gates, and uh, none of it does match up. Yeah, it kind of confirms another shrine being built by Virgis just to get the remainder of the hunts onto the shrine. And yeah, these these are two strong shrines behind. Forward blockhouse being built by two villagers. Okay, so Pierre Bowman's looking to be aggressive here. And I think that makes sense. Classically, this matchup, Russia, Japan, Russia kind of opens up. I've won a few games back in the old game, Tad, playing Russia, just going, sending 13 strelets straight away and training 10 and having 23... Strelitz only for Japan base and Japan going, well, I haven't got a cav shipment. Uh, I've got barracks down. I can't really do anything about this. Well played. I think we've moved a long way since then. Like, for example, here, Tori Gates, the Samurai will come out. XP will allow multiple shipments. The Daimyo comes into play with multiple sh shipments. Mobile shipment drop in. Let's see what the first card from Japan is. I, I want to think at least one eco card, like the War Villagers. Or the wood comes in. We do see 600 wood as card number one, but I'm probably sure that after this, it's just going to be military shipments or maybe gold here so we can fund Nagi production. They are very expensive units. Lovely shrine position on the left hand side. That's going to really annoy Russia late game. You know that once these goes, Russia's naturally going to walk into this direction or come across a shrine. That'd be super annoying. But so I like that. There's a shrine on the east as well. These are some really good shrine locations here from the general so far. First bit of Warden comes in, five Cossacks, batch of Strelitz coming out, but Nagis should be able to hold on, especially with Pike, Minutemen as well. We just a little bit underneath the HP for the Pikes. Cossacks go in, I don't know where the Cossacks are going actually, they're going really deep. Oh, Samurai on the back line, getting some value, and the Strelitz are super far away, but a batch of Nagis will come out. Okay, the, the Samurai is now snapped by the Explorer. One Explorer has, has poofed back. And uh, as things go early on, nothing's really happened. I think Pierre Bowman seems stable and just is thinking, I need to get out of here fast. And he's going to do that. Three Nagis do come out. Cossacks in the Strelitz are running back to the full blockhouse. Not interested in staying underneath the town centre with potential Minutemen pops. Samurai's still alive. He's hiding behind the tree. Maybe he's a bit shy today. I'm hoping that the general does not forget about that unit. It's a very strong unit. Probably stronger than a Doppelsonner, actually. I think they might actually be. They're cheaper than doppels. Oh, it, interesting. Maybe Japan players should use uh, samurais a little bit more often. Naginatas are out being chased down by Cossacks for 6.75 speed, 6.75, have the same speed. And yeah, these Nagis will pull back, I think. Just want to be a raid, annoying, get on the, f the map, raid around, but uh, not looking to commit to anything too heavy just yet. Gone fourville, fourville after six hundred wood so far. So the economy is actually getting there. We're still making quite a bit of shrines behind this. So the, the economy aspect here for Japan has not been neglected. More naggies out in the field waiting for that kind of right click from. Russia, but I don't think it's going to happen anymore. I don't think Pierre wants to push into Russia's base. I potentially want him to send gold and age behind. 700 gold now coming in behind. Uh, Cossacks got raiding left, but we'll come across a couple of these shrines. Nagy's going to get for a nice little raid, but there are musks nearby to push back. Nagy's could clean up the musks if they wanted to, but they just want to be annoying and push those away. Most important part is actually not getting caught by the Cossacks from Nagy's point of view. These Naginatas are there. They're good cavalry, but they're not the greatest anti-cav cavalry. Well, they could. Well, they might find some shreds, though. That's tempting. And he's just gonna go in, poke a few down. Yeah, two shot. This. This is a. This is a worthy exchange. Okay, he's gonna run away, and he's gonna lose pretty much all of them. But he could have stayed behind and picked off another couple shreds. I know cost effectiveness would still be all right there for rush uh, from Russia's point of view. But um, if anything, just to slow down that potential push of Russia while Japan's doing his own thing or the shrine in the map. I think that would work. Constructs coming down. Oh yeah, he hasn't even spent any of the construct just yet. Selling an export. He wants a cheap alliance, so he'll probably ally with Russia, probably not Russia, with Japan and train 
clubs and yeah, um, Konsha Yamabushi's. Japan's got nothing on the field at the moment. He's frantically throwing this up. He knows he's actually blocking this with the samurai. He knows he's defending it with minute. He, he needs the consulate up. Consulate comes in. He's going to click on Japan isolation, likely. Yeah, Japan isolation on the way. Oh, Minutemen down behind. Nagi's about to pop. There are three Nagis retreating. Nagis from Stable will retreat. Yep. Yeah. He's just waiting for a club timing. Five in queue. But Nagis are snared. Villagers on the on the berries as well, really awkward. I think everybody's gonna have to bu bundle into the TC pretty quickly. The uh, oh, he's gonna shinobi no monos instead, actually. So still a couple of vills um, being picked off here. I think he realised that the clubs will spawn on the Stralat side, so they get picked off before they take any combat. Uh, Villagers in the town centres, others are gathering. He just needs to get some stuff out. So far though, fight looking very very good here for Russia. Good exchanges. Shinobi no Mono's ready to get into the fight as well, but um, oh, that's, that's so many units from the general going down, and generals on the back foot to say the least. When Russia's ahead in score, you know you're in trouble, and this is looking dire. Make good points on Pukonku. I think I think a lot of I think quite a lot of Nagis have gone down for minimal effect. More Nagis do come up, so they should be able to. Probably clean up this engagement, but more Cossacks behind, and it's Shinobi is being trained instead of clubs. Uh, yeah, the Nagas are moving again. Nash Ashi's kind of has a shipment. Okay, so there should be enough units here to clean up this fight, but at what cost? The damage has been pretty total. More strikes coming in from the front, actually putting pressure. The gold mine's out, so he has to rely on the back gold mine. And uh, yeah, Russia will back off, but um, so far, looking good. We've got some musks clean up some shrines on the map. Yeah, so taking a heavy fight like this without all your musketeers. Feeling comfortable with your anti-shrine siege operation. Oh, Nagi's going to not take a good trade here. A couple of Cossacks go down, but uh, this is this is your pride and joy, the Nagi Natas. And it's unfortunate, but um, oh, short-range shotgun archer style here. 23 attack, decent attack. We'll pick some up and buy his time, buy his breathing space here. Tupi, um... Not doing any, can't really do anything good with those. Where's the Mapuchi? They're over here, though. Oh, it's Quasha. Oh, it's Quasha this time. Uh, Quasha Huminkas could be excellent anti shrine siege units. Very tempting to go for in that situation. Let's see, faster train time. The Incan gold mine tech's also pretty good. CM does one-shot Russian Musketeers, and that's why Japan has to have it in their deck. I mean, Japan has to have it in their deck regardless of the matchup they play. It's one of those things that sometimes you do need to have that behind. Ashes push back the Russian um, Musks, but Strats will push back the Ashes. And looks like, you know, although Japan's out of its base and pushing back, I think Russia's position here is in a good position. Enough of a, enough of a good position here to play from. Uh, if, I was to, if I was to take either, well, I mean, <laughs> I obviously take Russia, I don't play Japan. But what I'm trying to say is that although <laughs> Japan's looking better now than they did 20 seconds ago, or, or three minutes ago, oh, this Russian play, there's so many Cossacks now. Looking really strong. He's now selling Boyars. He's, he's, he's fully convinced this H2 play, which I, I respect. Sometimes he's always tempting with that we have a mass to kind of age up and upgrade all of them, but. Uh, Double train strats, getting the Cossack batches in, sending in the boyars. He realizes he doesn't want any more musketeers. These are just here for sieging and controlling, but um, not much else going. Nagi's going for a raid, but going straight into the musks and going to lose them. Uh, I, don't, I don't, I don't know the next Nagi play. He's just trying, trying to maybe get the raid on the on the food villagers. I, I have to anticipate. I've no idea how this is still under General Warwick's um, line of sight. Uh, no idea. That's a lot of stuff. Gotta remember as well, uh, Japan at this moment in time, they've kind of burnt through their XP shipments. So the economy's looking pretty poor. Oh, he's trying to age. He's trying to age. Ooh, that's tough. He might have to drop it with his villagers behind. Golden Pavilion put right here if he is going to commit to it. It'd be very tough for him to do so if he wanted now. 
there. He's just he's just going to mass a Nagi mass Ashley batch to hold on, but looking very very tough. Especially the food looking limited as well. Only eighteen hundred food remaining. Full Nagi batch coming out. Full Shinobi's going to be trained. Um, Nagi don't come on a good angle, and the strength's just taking some good trades on villagers. More bills going down. Forty two bills for General Warwick. Russia's forty four, but a lot of army here. Yes, General might take some decent early trades in the fight, but uh, basically saying kissing goodbye to his age up. Pierre Beaumont, though, behind this, sending in more gold. Oh, uh, just look at the cost axe here. There's so many decent, efficient handcap. Should there be no murders? If there are clubs, I'll be thinking of a good pop, but they're archers, and the cost is going to sit straight on them, and they're going to sit on these um, gold villagers. Potential for a load of villagers to go down here. Ah, uh, the game's been called. General Warwick has just tapped out, and Pierre Beaumont making. Potentially the most epic comeback of the tournament so far. 3-0 down is now only one game behind General Warwick. It's 3-2 to the General. I'm going to move into game number 6 in a bit. Yeah, J Japan here going for a Tory Gate play instead of uh, to Sugar Shrine. With all this Lysox he had early game, Sugar Shrine would be my... Um, tempted way to play behind this would have been good. A lot of early cavalry early on. There was the early Strelet Cossack play from Russia, which put Japan under considerable pressure, and that worked, worked really well there for Pierre Beaumont's point of view. But afterwards, Nagis were running around trying to raid villagers in amongst Russia's base. Uh, they just got caught out by the they got caught out by uh, building fire and Cossacks really did they just didn't get the momentum he was hoping to all the time uh, to boom behind and it got to the point where there was musketeers teaching shrines where Japan had no response for it whatsoever he was under pressure look at the military population a lot of sharp decreases here for General Warwick without much change to Russia's army point of view so the general hoping there for a bit more of a uh, momentum coming from that. No veil kills as well. So raiding with cavalry just to lose lose most of them and take minimal trades versus like rogue strats or musketeers. Yeah, I think the game was looking pretty tough at 10 minute mark and although there's momentary glimmer around 12 minutes when the armies were converging onto this side, it was only a faintest of hope as Russia was just happy to continue massing and yeah, once... Once the cherry orchards and the second mine would run out in Japan's base, then it would have been fully over. Alright, move on to the next game. Sompu Konku has only, only just uh, learnt the... Boyar's 5% combat nerf. It's the only 10% combat card on all the units. Oh! <laughs> no, I'm not queuing the ladder. Why am I doing that? Lol. We're going back to casting, guys. We're going back to the casting. Don't worry about it. And they haven't quite started, so no rush. Ooh, big 4v4 game there we could hop into. House is streaming mode already. Yeah. All right, all right guys, let's queue into another multi game. Let's do it. Pretty much. I'm just going to close the blinds now. It's pretty dark outside. asking for 3v3 60 min treaty oh my god that just looks like cancer like you know when you go to the hospital and you get diagnosed with cancer they, they show you like pictures of like grass or x-rays to confirm it this is like when you open like, i can imagine you just open have you in a room and just open a replay and go right this is what's happened here 
We're about to enter in a 60 minute treaty game. I joke, I joke, I joke. The next game kind of has, have they begun? Come on, boys. I'm, 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 I'm now actually really, like, really egging this series on. Especially after the, the uh, Florida game. That was a good game. And uh, the, the comeback from Pierre is looking to be very strong at this moment. Oh, okay. That's fine. Uh, a player's taking a break. Probably toy break. Um, oh. do, I, do I bring in the shake clip on the ESOC stream? There'll be a load of people who haven't seen it here. It's very tempting to do so, but I don't... I don't think I will just... Yeah, I'll be, I'll be taking it a bit too far for, uh, of a joke. But what a joke that is. So funny that was. Harrison is a... Is a... <laughs> oh, I lost his shit. So funny. Oh! The Exiled Fight Night number two. FPLC versus Zild Clan. Oh! It's gonna be it's gonna be a close one, I think. I think I think the top two players and both players is gonna be uh, very very close. But I think Jack might be a little bit player, a little bit of a better player than Aiken. So uh, I, th I think that's gonna be a Zild uh, three two win. It's gonna it's gonna be a it's gonna be a good one. I can't on a comment. Um... Going to be close. Going to be close with the Garjonians. Taking it. Speaking of the Garjonians taking it, I wonder how Giving Anxiety has been doing recently. Sometimes I see on Twitch he's like streaming to like 200 people on AOE 4, but other times he's like streaming to only like 20. It, it's, it always feels like when you're playing AOE 3 and streaming, you, you know what you're going to get. But um, with AOE 4, it's like, it's, like a, it's like a wild west of like, it could be a good day hunting for you, it could be a poor day hunting for you. It's a, it's a very strange one. Unless your name is Snooper and you're the only person streaming at your time zone and seems to do that very, very well. That works really nicely in that situation. Someone sent me a friend request. Or oh, clan browser. Oh, clan browser. Dun, 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 dun. Is that an invite? Oh. Oh my god, Vest Clan have taken off. We got we got Mr. JB underscore AOE. Gandalf. The Korean Air Force 21. Diplonovav, Talian, Marge Simpson. Oh, Marge Simpson here looked me an excellent player. What's what's the uh, ranking here? Eleven sixty eight. Whoa, Marge Simpson taking. There's a lot of people actually relatively love the same love to Widgey, so it actually could be some good to have some inter, inter um things. As, <laughs> has Robin actually named himself after his Elo score? Like, hey, my name's Robin, and my max Elo is fourteen thirty six. Uh, when there's me. Hey. I'm also pretty bad as well. Croatia have um, beaten Morocco. It seems 2 1 to uh, claim the third place. Not bad, not bad. I've got a load of multi games I've saved as Rex recently, so I can already dish that out. Um, 
honest, Adam was saying, honestly, Exile has a few strong team players, but best FPLC players still better than the best Exile players. Oh, definitely. Yeah, I mean, I'd be, I'd be, I'd be very surprised if FPLC lose a game and then Exile will be like, yes. Does any other clan want to try and take on FPLC now? Every like, yeah, no, thank you. <laughs> if 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 the Exod Fight Night have a third night, that'd be like the greatest achievement ever. When's the FIFA final tomorrow? Is it is it a three o'clock kickoff or like a seven o'clock kickoff? That's what I think it would be. Random survey, Argentina or France? Uh, Argentina. Is that the question of the team I like the most or the team I want to win? The answer to that is probably the same, really. I mean, we've already kicked Argentina's ass heavily once. We'll, we'll let them take the glory this time. Fifteen GMC tomorrow. Oh, okay, okay. Might go out for the. Might go for a gym session tomorrow morning and play some music, or maybe. Maybe go for a morning AOE three stream. I need to get the um those sounds files working on my stream and hopefully drive a bit more momentum for my Twitch channel. It always feels like when I'm in like other people's Twitches, I'm like, yeah, it's amazing. I'm typing and providing recorded games. I'm just there creating an atmosphere. Now, when I'm streaming, like, yeah, ah, oh, where's Harrison in my chat chat chatting and providing relics? I'm like, no. <laughs> At the moment, Lion is un the undisputed king of streaming at the moment. It has to be. It is pretty good watching his uh, channel. It's pretty fun. Ah, oh, come on, boys. When's the next game starting? They start. Okay, good. Should be very, very, very soon. Potentially one minute delay for these players. Maybe a little bit. Maybe they're not. I don't know. We'll find out. Lion and A's. I mean, okay. Well, it was obviously A's is A's because A's is absolutely great, different strategies and that. I think we all like A's because it's as if we kind of grown up with A's, so we kind of feel like we've kind of, he's like our, like, our, our brother. We've, we've been through so much with him. Um, but yeah, Lion's just, is just fun. Lion can take a joke as well. That, <laughs> that's, the, that's the funny thing. Some people can take a joke, some people can't take a joke. And I'm, I'm glad I'm a person who can take a joke. Oh, man, sure, the game started, boys, so let's hop into this game and uh, have a good one, and I'll see you on the other side. Oh, Oh, a Lakota player. That that is a that's a huge reveal, I think. I think that's a huge reveal. Right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to game number six of this best seven semi-final number one between General Warwick and Pierre Beaumont. General Warwick has dropped the last two games, but still leads the series 3-2. He's playing Portugal on Manchuria for the sixth game, and he'll be spawned to the southwest in the colour blue. His opponent, Pierre Beaumont. Spawn into the northeast map in the colour yellow. Playing as Lakota. Ooh. Exciting times. Using his speedy, speedy explorer to run around and pick up all the yaks. But he's somehow driven a car, quite literally, through the middle of two double yak spawns. Oh, that's Mother Nature. I don't want to see what Pierre... Oh, he's, he can't actually see them. He'll come across them. Oh, he's got to miss them. How do you miss two yaks? Is it, is it even possible to miss two yaks? How is it possible? Oh, that's so awkward. 
they're not, they're not exactly the uh, smallest of things, a yak. <laughs> oh, that's, uh, that's tough. That is tough. There's, there's a double yak there and a double yak here. But, like, you can... It's barely touching. You, you, oh, I'll be on the phone to um, CEO of Microsoft looking for explanations of that one. Who's paused the game? I've paused the game. I haven't paused the game. That's not me pausing the game. That is currently Pierre Beaumont pausing the game, I believe. Do I dare press the unpause button? Is that actually me pausing the game? No, it's not me pausing the game. So we're going to chill. Remix says, Animus, I'm an okay 1v1 player, but by no means I'm good. So, yes, you're better than Animus, then, if that's your description. Master the Roam said, is this a best of seven? It is. We're in game number six, so we're getting close to the end. Jedi Warwick still a match point. Pierre Beaumont needs to win here as Lakota to stay in the series. Um, Aries asking remixes, what is Elo? I'm going to assume 1300. I don't know. But it's always nice to have new players in the round. And uh, General Warwick here picking up two yaks in the middle of the map. That's brutal. That's something that Pierre wants. There's a, there's two yaks down to the south side of his base, which he can find. Does see one behind General's base? Maybe. Maybe the drive-by chief, the spotted horse, can actually come up and pick all four of these up. I don't think he's thinking that big brain, but the potential. Does he see? <gasps> he sees them now. Oh, that's not that's that's General's point of view. Oh, he still doesn't see them! Oh my god, I swear Yaks livestock can move around a little bit. To not see anything there is just brutally unlucky. Ah, oh, drama. That's it, Remix. You've seen the light. You once was a treaty player, now comes to the supremacy. What a good boy. This is where the action's at. This is where the fast-paced content, the true skills are. And um, to be fair, you know, I would give like a weekend's go of Treaty if it was if um, Blitz Treaty was uh, a thing. I know that Julian's been campaigning for it quite heavily, Blitz Treaty. But um, no, it's just too. There's just too much stuff in Supremacy which makes Supremacy so much better, in my opinion, than Treaty. I just. There's nothing worse than trying to watch a commentated treaty game. It's just... <laughs> Whoa! The, those those Imperial heavy cannons or heavy horse guns. I've just killed 15 musketeers. No worry. The opponent still has 80,000 food and can train another 15 within 5 seconds. Panic over. <laughs> it, I just watch them going... Is it done yet? Is it over yet? Who's winning yet? I don't know who's winning. What's happening? <laughs> uh, I was saying, I think Treaty's in the fights, but you don't even play Treaty. You don't, you don't know what Treaty balance is like, Animus. That's like the most, that's like the most Animus thing I've ever heard from you say. Uh, right. Back to this game in hand. Potential FI deck here from Lakota. Wow, they, they put a 750 gold price tag on that. I suppose it's... Fair. Do you remember, when, remember that was a free card back in the day when they patched it. What dev thinks that was that as a free card with the champion text on top of it as well was a good idea. I sometimes I just the devs I always get confused by like for every like five good ideas they throw in ten absolute shockers that well two sho absolute shockers or maybe ten I don't know. Uh, I'm talking about the treaty uh, health. Oh yeah, I guess it works. I mean, there's always me people playing. You, I'm sure you'll always find Dramos and Age of playing treaty. Anyway, General Warwick here. He's aging up. Hasn't gone Fate Taurus. Gone for Scooters. I think Fate Taurus is banned in this tournament because of how strong that card is. I, just, I still, I still again, unbelieve. I still can't believe how you can have Fate Taurus in. The Portugal's home city deck and not think it's broken when you compare it to um, maybe Porcelain Tower, Rainbow Trickles, uh, Sumptree Laws, other things. It's crazy. Double Dock has been dropped down here by the General. Schooner's going for water play. Interesting how the town centre's not by the docks. Actually, in base, I think he's aware that the chances of Lakota going water are not necessarily slim, but just. 
he has the tools to deal with Lakota water by going water himself. But actually, he's possibly fearing the infantry push, the cavalry aggression, and wants to sit in base. Meanwhile, Pierre Beaumont is going for the TP line, likely to go for to stagecoach play. I haven't quite got that clicked in yet. Not really too sure what Lakota do, does these days. They've their club shipments are terrible. They're three. They've got no four axe rise. It's only three axe rise these days. So, yeah, his deck is just seven bows, two dog soldiers, and the food trickle is what he can realistically send at this point, and probably going to be the uh, food trickle. He's only gathered not much food, so the card on its own is not representing great value for the time being. Maybe he's going to slowly gather the gold and then try and send in this food card as late as possible to get the maximum benefit from it. Oh, Pierre Bowman gets the Explorer kill there. That's quite nice. War Hut on the coast, but War Huts only do um, 7.5. Only 3.25 versus Villagers. Uh, so that's only there to dissuade warships. I don't actually think that Pierre Beaumont's going into any dock at the moment or sending any canoes himself. So the war hut on the coast is um, not having the momentum that he would have wanted so far. He does find one Ville. The Ville runs away, but the Cav Archer's not interested behind this. Double defensive town centre looking pretty good. The fishing boats are relatively uncontested. This is looking really good already here for the general. Um, do you just have to call it as it is? And the, the bow riders haven't got too much done. Great coats has been researched, by the way. So it has a nice 203 HP and uh, a card available here for Lakota. He sent in the um, food trickle, so he's, so he's got 20% faster from hunted animals and a little bit of extra food being added to the stockpile as well as that extra bonus. So that's looking pretty decent. He's aging up now. With the messenger, fast Egypt has a shipment ready to go. Might want to go straight into four war canoes. He might actually really want to go into the buccaneer fleet for these four privateers. We'll get something done. And realistically, needs to get something done here. You just can't let General Warwick have a full boom on the water. We did notice in game number one, General Warwick going water as Spain on Saguenay, getting a fantastic victory as a result. Remember, these are rendering plant fishing boats, and the general has already researched gill nets. No long lines just yet, but I suppose it's not the greatest a disaster here for himself. No stagecoach. Pierre Bowman's up, but so is general. So we've got a 50 villager eco economy Portuguese versus a 21 villager eco <laughs> Lakota. Does have. Um, Infinite housing population, let's say, and his villagers hunting are really good. 1.18, but maybe villagers hunting for the... Yeah, 0.97, not too much of a dissimilar. War canoes do come out, but... The general must sense this. He must sense that there's an ability for him to defend this with the vi fishing boats in the dock. Maybe pivoting into the privateer while making a couple of um, caravels. I've, it's, just, it's just the war canoes. It's not even the privateers. This is... Um, it's going to be good. It's going to be good for him. He's going to get some, a lot of, vil kit, lot of uh, fishing boat kills and disrupt. Long lines do come out. So he wants to garrison in. But the shipment's nearly ready to come in for the general. He's going to send in the frigate, obviously, at this point. A couple of goons pushing back his elite bow riders. I'm just going to run back to the TC. There's no re reason to engage us any more than he has to. Frigate instantly being called in. Full batch of goons ready to be trained. He might miss this. No, he captures it. Of course he captured it. He's a good player. It's the general. Um, yeah, he's just going to lose all his war canoes if he sits in the dock anymore. Managed to keep them alive, but there should be relatively easy pickings for a frigate to come out. A frigate and maybe a caravel. Uh, he's just keeping train fishing boats, and I absolutely love it. There's, there's, no, there's no maximum number of fishing boats you can have in the sea. The more you put in, the faster you get the res back out, and the faster you can spam goo, cast, huss, all the good stuff. Here comes the frigate. In on the water. Uh, you might want to move the... He wanted to... Might have moved the flag towards the Lakota side, but there's still so much. He is 
saturating the whales to some extent. He needs to get that one as well. But uh, the uh, was it Walker needs to diving in. Arsenal somewhat denied. Oh, there's the primitives. Yes, the double naval shipment. Oh, hog pike. Okay, so Pierre actually can clean the water up, and I was, I was kind of hoping that at least a caravel was trained on the side. Once you see all this, you've just lost water. And this game has just gone from easy stomp for the general to right, we're back in back in business, boys. What a shipment. What a momentum swing. There's no way General holds on to this. The dude's trying to send two caravels. That's not gonna work. General cancelled the shipment. The water's lost. You've let it go down, unfortunately. There's no point trying to hold on to this. A dock's being built. This is tough. This is honestly super, super tough at the moment. I, I, I can see why he should, but realistically, you need to cancel your losses and go into Dragoon Combat and just take the land fight. The TP is all under Lakota control. What a play here from Lakota. What a play. The War Canoe and the two privateers. Two caravels and the dock might defend. He's training a frigate. If the frigate comes out, he was hold on to the water. <laughs> One privateer has gone down. He needs to basically put every single fishing boat into the dock. He needs as much cover and fire as possible. The Dragoons are running around, but it's actually Bow Rider. We can push this back. What a gameplay so far. And Dragoons managing to dive out the way. One caravel going down. But the caravel actually buys time for the frigate to train out. So he's just about held on. I'm surprised by this. I thought this is a lost position. Yep, yeah, there's a frigate. A war canoe is super low HP. Whoa, that that canoe, that frigate nearly fell over due to the how strong that shot was. But um, yeah, the Warwick's up in score. He's got a lot of res, but he needs to convert this now. Castor's just run straight into bow riders. Oh, he needs stuff. He needs to call cast straight away. Call cast, make cast. Call minute men. Put bills in TC. Is action popping off everywhere? So many fishing boats went down, unfortunately, due to not fortifying that position on the water. It's, ne it's never a bad move to train an extra warship on the water just to make sure that it's fully secured. Because if you lose it, it just puts you on the back foot. And look, look, the momentum here. General Warwick has no momentum on land's result. He has economy. He has eco. But he has no momentum. One minute been being called. Another Minutemen likely to be caught behind. Castle's being sent. Castle's being trained. The water's now being cleaned up, essentially. Yeah, there's still a war hut there, but that doesn't really matter. San Antonio can go back and get underneath the dock, reheal. But now the castle's coming out. Oh, that's some spicy play. The two caravels and H2 has actually managed to hold on. I absolutely got that call wrong. But that, those two caravels could have been three caravels, H3. Could have been. I think the three caravels would have been a stronger uh, shipment original than the frigate. I'm expecting the next shipment here for the general to be the three organ guns if it ever gets to that point of view. Castor's uh, taking some shots versus the bow rise, a bit, bit of split fire. Might need to be focus fire actually in this, these low numbers. Yeah, there's so many damaged bow rise, but they're all standing. Halb's popping out. Good. Good pop here, good pop, good pop is achieved, and they're straight working away. Castle's firing, goons gonna hop in as well. Minutemen need to be called from one of these towns, and there's five goons coming from behind. Well, yeah, I suppose, I guess he has to, he hasn't got the gold for it. And uh, Bowrise moving back out. TP line still under Pierre Bowman's control. Strong economy, but 77 fills in total, and reclaiming the docks. More docks being trained. Frigate needs to heal, definitely, but you can see that he wants to continue this um, water boom. Yeah, the Coats do struggle to commit before the H4, the captured mortars. Halb's starting to siege the train line. There's one train post quite damaged. Even if these are taken down and not captured here by the general, just taking them down is going to hurt Lakota so, so much, and it's still going to bow rider Casador. A Barada Wakina, but full castles here should be so good. The general, he's on double. He's on double barracks. He can afford this. He's got so much food income. He's saturating the wells now. Yeah, four of them going to the wells. This is good play. And he's just going to essentially dominate this water again. The comet's looking very, very good, and the castles are going blap blap. 
If it was here tanking, it wouldn't be a problem here for Portuguese. And actually, in a weird sense, I kind of encourage it. You want to keep your castles alive as much as possible. The villagers don't really matter. So keep training. You've got another 87 somewhere. <laughs> and Portuguese water once again holding off to get him into a beautiful position. The game being poured once again. Let's take a stock. Where we're at. 68 landfills here for Portugal. We're in the remaining 22 on the fishing. Uh, all the whales are currently being harvested. So much water res. No need for any more um, fishing boats because most reds have been taken out. Maybe another caravel or a galleon. A galleon here could be resistant to the war hut and take down the war hut and ensure that no dock will ever get produced. Side position for Hus Dragoons might be working. He paused, must be Ezad. No, I thought it might be I thought it might be Revnak pausing. Whee. Uh, we do need a Tengu Shrine here from Lakota's point of view. Tengu Shrine faster fire rate for Cav Archers, I believe. Yeah. Mounted Cav Arch mounted units, yep. Yeah. There you go. The Cav Archers can fire much faster. We've got Dragoon Range Cavalry Cow Gold here for our Portuguese player. Nice raid here from Lakota, just diving in, picking up so many units. What on earth is... Wars? Oh, yeah, they're the multiplier for wars. <laughs> Bo Rai's doing six siege versus a war. That is such a meme, that is. <laughs> yes, it's the infantry doing more damage to wars, but cavalry do... Yeah, just make some wars. Just war the map, General. Just war the map. And there you go, the... The Kota can just do nothing about that. Yeah, siege attack. Yeah, in the Kota infantry doing more attack versus wars. Oh, I forgot about that balance change. That's so funny. That is. Yeah. So currently, with the uh shocking state of having no four villagers in their deck, no four axe in their deck. Their club shipment just worse. Just make a wall and Lakota just types GG. Easy. Well played. Castle's moving in. Ford War. Community Plaza for Warriors. Potentially. War Dance has been called, but he's only got Bow Rise, really. So we a couple of villas going down behind. Just stand and deliver. It's a trade. I think taking trades at this moment is in favour of what he's player, but. Uh, General Warwick here moving in with a significant score advantage, a really strong army. The game has been called, and the general has defeated Pierre Beaumont in this series and defeats him by a scoreline of 4 to 2. Well played to both players. Bit of a comeback on there from Pierre Beaumont, and I thought this game was nearly completed when Lakota dropped down four war canoes into four. Uh, privateers, maybe the other way around might be a bit better because of how slow the recruit buccaneer fleet card comes in. But with no dock follow up here from Lakota on the water, and just, just the state of Lakota eco compared to Portuguese water eco, if that push didn't work, the game was pretty much done. Portuguese managed to hold on to water there in the end, and just age three Burkinas versus Casadors just. Not great. The bow rides are very strong units, but um, we just don't have the economy. Man, Lakota looked to be in a, such a difficult position at the moment. You can, they still somewhat forced to go into infantry play because of um, other things. But you can easily overlook the fact that bow riders and all cavalry have a negative multipliers of siege attack versus uh, building. So. Um, Wow, see, yeah. <laughs> my Malta, my Malta brain's going whoop, 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 whoop. That'd be interesting. That'd be so interesting. They do have multipliers versus artillery, so fixed guns do take neutral damage, let's say, but... I don't know. Lakota looked to be in the worst state design at the moment I think I've ever seen them. There was a moment in time they were really, like, they were really good, but also really well designed. Like they, they, they're balanced, but I, I don't know what the b civilization identity of Lakota is. Whether they, I think they, they can only really play on stage TP maps and stagecoach maps to take them. Kind of need to go, um, forward war hut into like Seaton, Seaton Bowrider war clubs have kind of gone back out. Of fa I don't know. 
I really don't know, but General Rock knows how to play a bit of Portuguese, and that's all he needs in a situation to to win the series, win the game. The uh, first two games in the um, series are actually really except not exceptionally played, but like they felt very clean victories there for the general. The um, Spain or Sagrone and Russia on Cascade Range were very well controlled, well executed. Good game plans there were coming through. Pierre Bowman had the military, had the map mobility, but just couldn't get anything really to work too far. Village population. Yeah, it's just... Yeah. To be fair, even, even if all the water went down, it wouldn't have been the end of the game. It would have been very interesting then because of the, they could have better hunting villagers, uh, would have had the stagecoach. But I still think the resources there and then, the Portuguese player could have, would have still got his mass... All the building fire from Portugal means it's really hard for Pierre to push in. No dog soldiers were called this game. It's too expensive. They have 2,000 food now. They're too expensive. And versus uh, a lot of Dragoons probably wouldn't have been effective and just couldn't roll. You just couldn't run the risk of sending them. The only person who plays uh, Lakota these days I know is Kevin. And um, that's about it on the top level. Yeah. Resources just diverge away. Came a bit close once the fish boats were idled in that mid fight, but that was two shipments and 800 golds Lakota had to send to get that situation. Meanwhile, there's a one frigate to hold. Another dock did come up, but it was just about enough to hold on to that situation. So, uh, well played in the end. And um, we say congrats to Pierre for getting this far, but he has to bow out now. And the general will move on to the final where you take on either. Major Cooper or a Canyon K. Great. Right, GG's. GG's, GG's, GG's. That's about it from me, I think. I'm going to eat some chocolate. Relax.